Every Canadian in sight. They're going to have to be very selective. They could tire themselves out by doing it. And the Canadian forwards are very shifty, so they're going to have to be extremely careful. There are some factors involved, and the system is one of them. Boston, I thought, moved the puck extremely well out of their own end in that game the other night, and they're going to have to do just that here tonight. Do you think they'll have those uh, defensemen forechecking Rick Smith and Milbury with a two when they saw the opportunity moved in deep? And the wings were then able to cover the Lafleurs coming out better than a defenseman could, John. Well, I think you're going to see a certain amount of that, Fred, actually here tonight. Uh, Bjorn Cherry is an innovative coach, and I think he's going to try to mix things up to confuse Canadians a little bit. But uh, I think the significant thing is the fact that they're using the short passes to move it out of their own end. One other factor, this is a smaller rink than the Montreal Forum. The corners are narrower, which is going to give the Boston defense a little bit of an advantage, but it also gives the Canadian defense. They've got some big defensemen, three very strong skaters, and they're going to have an advantage here because it is smaller. Boston's forwards have not scored a goal in the first two games. They've got to get untracked in this one. You look back in the uh, NHL guide, I was doing it a, a while ago, Ken Dryden listed as a third-round draft pick of the Boston Bruins, 14th overall. In 1964, that was after he got out of high school in Canada, and I believe before he went to uh, Cornell, but then he was traded to Montreal. But we're going to look at two of the finest goaltenders in uh, hockey, 30-year-old Dryden, 37-year-old Jerry Cheevers. Well, goaltending is what Stanley Cup is all about, and we've seen two superb goaltenders in this series. Cheevers, if you'll remember, came over from Toronto, actually, so both of these goaltenders did not sort of start their pro careers with the teams they're now with but they are tremendous goaltenders very different in their method of style of play uh, Dryden very conservative uh, plays it by the book waits for the shooter to shoot goes for the puck while at the other end of the ice Jerry Cheevers is a challenging type of goaltender magnificent skater he does not wait for the shooter to shoot he goes and gets the shooter and he has played just uh, magnificent in goal for Boston in both of the games played to date John, I think the key for Montreal, those three defensemen, it has been for the last uh, two years. I, I think they're the three who make the team go, and that's not to say anything against Guy Lafleur, who, as Don Cherry said, is world's greatest hockey player. Well, I'll tell you, if I was out there on the ice as a forward for Canadians, I'd be uh, tempted to free wheel as well because they carry the puck. They're not afraid to make it out on their own. They go around a couple of guys and uh, make the pass up through the center. They have a very strong defense, and this, to me, is the key to the uh, Montreal attack. Yet uh, Boston, we know Park, a uh, candidate for the Norris Trophy. Milbury, Rick Smith, uh, Doak, and Dennis O'Brien with his hitting did an excellent job against the uh, Canadians. In comparison, they kind of suffer when you talk about the Robinsons. Well, I think one of the things Boston's got to do, they've got to play it a little bit on the conservative side. The wings have got to come back, got to cover those Canadian wingmen, so that Boston defense can stand up at the blue line and stop a lot of that nonsense that goes on in the Boston end. That's very, very important. They did it extremely well in the game on Tuesday night. They'll have to continue that tonight. Well, we're looking forward to great action, and we'll have more here at Boston Garden after these messages. Announcing Toyota's Million Dollar Dash for the 1980 Olympic Games. You got it. For you, participating Toyota dealers have a sweepstakes with a million dollars in prizes. For the athletes, one million dollars to train now. Toyota and your Toyota dealer will make a donation for the U.S. Olympic team with every new Toyota sold through June 30th. The Million Dollar Dash. You asked for it, you got it, Toyota. Takes a classy dog to make New England's classiest dog track. The big difference between running and racing. Put a little spring in your life at Rainham Park, New England's top dog race track. In the new issue of TV Guide, read about the behavior patterns of some politicians. Since Canadian television installed cameras in the House of Commons, the members of that august body have brushed up their act. Find out about some of the changes. In the new issue of TV Guide, When you can't go home too soon, time turn to Brigham's. When your tummy starts to talk and you don't have to do much walking, the next time you get hungry, turn to Brigham's. When the movie's done, you're hungry, turn to Brigham's. When the home team's finally won, one turn to Brigham's. We've been doing lots more cooking when you're hungry, 
Stanley Cup action, the Boston Garden, the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens for the third time as Canadians lead the series two games to none. And we saw a tremendous hockey game Tuesday night at the Montreal Forum. And it's too bad the Bru Bruins had to lose it in overtime, but they played their hearts out. But they gained something in losing, I believe. The concept that they can beat this Montreal Canadian hockey team, but they know what is required of them. Extra hard work and as few mistakes as possible will make it work for the Bruins as they will come out now to a standing ovation here at the Boston Garden. And for us to say this is a must win for the Boston Bruins, each one of the players on the ice tonight knows it and will be giving their all to capture their first win of the series and hopefully give them some additional momentum for the fourth game which will be played here at the Boston Garden on Sunday night. Game time will be at 8.05. And as usual, we have a color guard with us tonight. And uh, they are uh, from the 26th Infantry Division, the Mass Army National Guard, and the individuals in the evening's color guard will be Staff Sergeant Francis R. Healy, and they will be on left to right. Sergeant Major James R. Barry of Medford, Sergeant First Class Charles J. McCollum from Newburyport, and Specialist Fourth Class Weston A. Hurd from North Reading. The two on the outside, Healy and Hurd, will be wearing the color guards dressed in the original colonial uniforms as worn by their predecessors. The information supplied to us by Captain Stuart B. Tauber, Assistant Public Affairs Officer of the 26th Infantry Division. And we want to thank him for giving us the details. The battalion is commanded by Major Eugene Scopatolo of Reading, and the Yankee Division is commanded by Major General Nicholas J. Del Torto of Medford. As we await the start of festivities before the third game of the Stanley Cup Finals. Beavers in goal for the Boston Bruins, Ken Dryden for the Montreal Canadiens, and Fred, this crowd could be a factor at the outset for the Bruins. You can feel the tension right at this moment. Well, they uh, had the loudest cheer when Jerry Cheever's name was announced, and they are uh, giving them a second standing ovation. crowd. I don't see anybody sitting down, so there are a lot of Canadian fans in this audience who must also be standing as the Boston Bruins receive a standing ovation. And we're all set now as the 26th Infantry Division marches smartly out to the right of Kent Dryden. That was about a minute uh, standing ovation there, and uh, when the Bruins first appeared after their original practice session, they also got a standing ovation. So the fans right behind them. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Canadian and American national anthems. Oh.
on our left and on our right, Leon Stickle, the two linesmen. In goal for the Montreal Canadiens, his 12th start of the playoffs. He has played, has started all three games against the Bruins, 1.69 goals against average. And at the other end of the ice, Jerry Cheevers, his ninth start in the playoffs. He has started all three games for the Bruins, 2.85. And here for the great play-by-play -play from the Boston Garden is Fred Cusick. Peter McNabb at center, John Wensick on the left, and Terry O'Reilly on the right wing for Boston. Mike Milbury and Brad Park on defense. Doug Jarvis at center with uh, Bob Ganey, Rajon Ulright, with Serge Savard and Larry Robinson. And Park to McNabb, and it's into the Canadian end. That's with Savard. Two four checkers, and they move it up the middle, and Jarvis gets it to Ool, off to Ganey. Ganey a shot kicked out by Keeley. Puck kept in by Jarvis, now tapped to Wensink. Wensink coming out. Ganey after him. A pass over on the right wing side. O'Reilly after it. He's checked, can't get it. Park gambles to keep it in, does. Moves in deep. Park stick handling, handling it well. Now clears it up. It's blocked. McNabb gets it. Park moves it in deeper. That's with Robinson. Takes a hit from O'Reilly as the puck goes to McNabb. A backhander, a save, right? And that bounced right in. Wensink in on Robinson. They battle in the corner. Wensink had it. O'Reilly gets it to McNabb, a shot. A save, Dryden, as McNabb has two shots on net. In the opening minute of play, this broadcast authorized by the Boston Bruins Hockey Club. Solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience, any broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game, without the express written and sent of the Boston Bruins, a TV 38 is prohibited. Bill Nyrop has an eye injury. He took that stick of Middleton, and he's out of action, and Bouchard is on defense. He's out of the hospital, which is good news, uh, Fred. Uh, Bill Nyrop may play Sunday night for the Montreal Canadiens. They have added Brian Engblom, who is uh, wearing number three. Don't the shot. Scores! Now he knows off the faceoff. Kills it by Ken Dryden as Rattel got the draw back to him. And in 59 seconds, the Bruins lead 1-0. Rattel with a faceoff. Dryden never saw this on the way through. Screen into the far corner, and he looked behind him. That was the first time he saw the puck as the Bruins go out in front. 59 seconds of the first period. John Rattel won the faceoff from Jacques Lemaire, and the drive by Gary Doak went all the way. 1 0 Bruins. Gary Doak the score after 59 seconds of play. And now. LaPointe flicks it into the Boston end. Back for it. Doak to Middleton. He can't move it out. Lemaire presses him. Rattel trying to work it out. Checked all the way by Lambert. Cashman back to get it. Cashman going behind the net. Lambert after him. Over to Doak. Doak scored the goal. Rick Smith, the quick clear up. Goes to Cashman. To Rattel on side. He lost it. Poked away by LaPointe. Covered by Cashman. Bounces to Doke. Doke the score from Jean Rattel. 59 seconds in the first period. And at center ice, Doke with the puck. Over to Rick Smith. Up to Cashman. And he drives it in wide of Dryden. LaPointe around the boards. Doke in on Shuck. Checks him. Bouchard trying to move it out. Checked by Rattel. Doke moves it in deep. But it's knocked out by the Canadians, and Cornway, Rick Smith, shut, all going for it. Shut, digs it out, drops it off from one dude, and he hit the post. And a quick shot here, knocked down by Rick Smith. Off to Middleton, center ice. Up for Rick Smith. His pass blocked, and he's taken out of the play, and the Canadians back. Mondu to Lafleur over the line. The shot saved, Cheevers! A big stop by Cheevers. As the Bruins got trapped that time, and with the score, Boston won Montreal nothing. The 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs continue in just a moment. Now Eastern Airlines lets you see the people you've been wanting to see. With super savings everywhere in the U.S., 30 to 40 percent off. So a couple from New York can be with their son in South Carolina. A young doctor from Chicago can be with his family in Atlanta. And a little girl from Philadelphia can be with her friends in Walt Disney World. Take advantage of Eastern Super Savings Everywhere and get together with the people you love. Well, it makes
Knicks for inciting action for the crowd, but Boston cannot afford to open up like this. Here's Guy LaFleur with a drive. Watch Cheevers. This one almost slipped between the pads, but he managed to close them right there just in time. And Mondu had a drive from dead center. He hit the goalpost to the left of Cheevers. But Boston has got to tone this game down a little. Puck cleared out by Park. Fed back by the Canadians. Milbury moves it up. Milbury checked by Engblom. Now it goes to Schmatz, and they say it was gloved. A Bruin to a Bruin, and uh, directed by hand, and Van Hellemann calls a faceoff right at the Montreal line. Brian Engblom out of the University of Wisconsin. Fred, one of the dangers of Helder Skelter forechecking in the Canadian's end is that you're apt to get three forwards trapped. That is not good. They've got to play good forechecking, but it's got to be on the conservative side. They've got to be very careful of those Canadian wingmen. They've got to stay with them. Robinson from behind his nets. Right up the middle. Missed by Mondu, but Cheevers has to play it as Mondu moves down. Up for Park. He's checked. Now Schmatz trying to move it out. Does. Center ice with Barkov over the line. But they lost control, and the Canadians clear it away quickly. Park knocks down shut, and Ben Hellemann lets it ride. Cheevers handles it off to Park. Ahead to Shepard. Shepard a shot off Brian Englund. Behind the net, Schmutz in the check. The puck goes to Park. Park cut in front and lost it. The Bruins keep it in. Schmutz hit by Robinson. Robinson breaks it out. Up the left side. Cuts in front. Moves for a shot and can't get it away as Cheevers came out to challenge him. And a wide open game here. Bruins lead 1-0, but that's not the style they want. Lambert back to drive one, just missed. And Marcotte ahead to O'Reilly. O'Reilly checked by Chartraw. And the play offside at the Boston line. Live from the Boston Garden, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup Finals. It's small, it's small, it's strong. Hey, that's my dodge, that's my dodge. Lots of folks are finding out smaller feels bigger in a new Dodge Aspen at a price that's a whole lot smaller than you'd think possible. So why not join the ones who say, Say that's my Dodge, say that's my Dodge, say that's my Dodge. See your local New England Dodge dealer today. Lupian is on defense for Montreal, his first appearance in the series. He's a 6'6", 210-pound defenseman who's had a couple of scraps with O'Reilly and uh, proved to be very, very tough for Terry O'Reilly. Doak's goal, it's 1-0 Boston. Rick Smith clears it in. McNabb, O'Reilly, Jonathan, the Boston line. This is Lupian, O'Reilly in pursuit. Lupian gets it off to Risebro, but the Bruins check it closely. Now it's back to Lupian. Lupian pokes it in, Cheevers up. Whips it around, not out. Risebro keeps it in. It's the pass blocked by Doak to O'Reilly. And Lupian hard on O'Reilly. McNabb over the line with Jonathan, two on one. Off to Jonathan, in. Back to McNabb, and he missed. The backhander. O'Reilly slams into Lambert. And McNabb keeps it in. His pass blocked by Savard. McNabb keeps it in again to O'Reilly. O'Reilly wheeling. Back for Doak. Shot. Save. Loose. Hot, knocked away. Doak moves in deep, keeps it in, takes a hard hit. This is a hitting line on for Montreal. Puck cleared away. Chartraw hit by Rick Smith. Down to the Boston end it goes, icing. Did you ever see action like this, John? Well, this is a tremendous first period. We played four minutes and 39 seconds. Boston out in front, one nothing. Fred, that first goal is very important, but sometimes when you get it early before you get the set, style of play. Now Boston would like to slow this game down, but they've gotten the goal. They smell a little bit of extra incentive. Now they're overpressing it a little bit. McNabb did not follow through on a great play by Jonathan. Mattel slides it across in front right off the faceoff. Ganey trying to come out. Cashman after him. Ool works it away to Jarvis. The shot saved. Cheevers kicked it out. Short side bid. Cheevers trying to clear. It rolls around for Cashman. Ahead to Rattel. Can't get it. LaPointe flipping it right back in, but Ganey is offside on the play. Five minutes of Stanley Cup action. Very exciting in every Bruins hockey game. Schlitz Light Beer will name the most valuable player of the game. In the meantime, remember, it took Schlitz to bring the taste to life. Dope from Rattel, 59 seconds. And Boston leads 1-0. Engblom broken up by Middleton to Rattel. Ahead for Middleton. 
LaPointe chasing the middle and moves in, trying to cut in, scores! Rick Middleton coming down in the corner with a brilliant rush down the left side. And he wheeled in front and beat Dryden. And Rick Middleton makes it 2-0 Boston. What a great individual effort here. Watch Key LaPointe now. Middleton getting body position. We talked about it before. Going very low around Dryden who didn't put the stick out. And he tossed it in and them a beautiful play now watch the body position of Middleton right here he starts to lean low he has the body position on Gila Point sensational move friend well Rick Middleton's been doing it and the Bruins lead 2-0 Marcotte keeps it in and drives and Dryden drops it off for Robinson a pass up blocked by Dope now the Canadians work it out shot to Lemaire over the line, a shot over the net. The rebound, Schmatz. Rattel gets his second assist of the night as he sent Middleton in on the left. Robinson starts it away. Blocked by Doak, center ice. Marcotte, now to Schmatz. Schmatz over the line. Moves for a shot. Dryden the save. Shepard, forechecking. And the puck cleared away at center ice, taken by Rick Smith. Off for Marcotte. Fed in on Dryden. He hangs on. Lafleur knocked down by Marcotte at the line as Lafleur might have tried to check him. With the score, Boston 2 and Montreal nothing. This is Boston Bruins Stanley Cup hockey. Listen to what people are saying about their home video recorders. Mine records only two hours. There's a better one. It offers up to four hours. Magnavox. Paid extra for a timer. Magnavox comes with a timer built in. Can't edit by remote. With a better one, you can. The better one. Magnavox Home Video Cassette Recorder. New from Magnavox. Receive free cassettes in a full-length major motion picture film with a purchase of a Magnavox Video Cassette Recorder during their box office bonus. Well, Sammy Pollock, who has engineered many, many great teams for the Montreal Canadiens, the general manager, a little bit of anguish on his face, but he always sits that way even when his team is ahead. And he's there with Claude Ruel, assistant coach, Claude Ruel. The Bruins intercept, keep it in, McNabb drops it, O'Reilly with it. Check, pokes it in deeper. As the nine is McNabb, O'Reilly, and Jonathan. Lambert trying to come out. Goes to Robinson, on the move, broken up by Park at the line. Park gets control, keeps it, has to beware, and finally gets it to O'Reilly. Ahead for Jonathan too far, and this will be icing. Ruel stands and watches the Bruins practice. His O'Reilly head-to-head -head with Risebro there, a little jam, quickly separated. 13-22 left, first period, 2-0 Boston. The goal, Middleton from Rattel at 5-11. Ruel stands and watches intently the Bruin practice, looking for maybe somebody who might be limping or a sore wrist or something. Cheevers, who takes very little practice, went over and conversed with him and nullified. <laughs> Jerry, very relaxed, just conversed for most of the Bruins' practice, and Ruel could not keep an eye on the Bruins. <laughs> Not bad, I'll tell you. That Cheevers thinks of everything. The draw goes to Cheevers, and he clears it out to Jonathan. Jonathan rushes with McNabb. Clearing in. O'Reilly and Bouchard into the corner. O'Reilly intercepts to McNabb. McNabb free. Wheels in front. Shot. Block. O'Reilly back to McNabb. A backhander. It is blocked by LaPointe. A big play. And Risebro back to Cornwallier. Into the corner. Hit by Milbury. Mark in there. Jonathan McNabb back. And McNabb trying to freeze it. Gets it around the boards. And Jonathan works it out. To McNabb with Milbury. And offside. Milbury was in ahead and he fell down behind the net there. As Mike Milbury was on the move, Boston leads 2-0. Well, the Bruins on a goal by Doak off the faceoff at 59 seconds. And then a tremendous effort by Rick Middleton coming down the left wing side, he cut around Guy Lapointe, who's tough to get around, very mobile. He turned well, Lapointe did, but Middleton just duck, ducked underneath him with the body, and what a sensational move he made on Ken Dryden as he scored his fifth of the playoffs from Jean Rattel at 5-11. It's 2-0 Bruins. Rattel, Cashman left, Middleton on the right wing, and that's a switch. 
as Middleton has liked that left wing side, and that's where he scored. Pass up blocked by Middleton. He's right back with Rattel. Rattel over the line, going wide on Englum. Back to Middleton. Middleton checked by Robinson. Englum with it. Did not play, but is playing because of Nyrop's eye injury. Out for Ganey to Chartraw. Now Ganey broken up. Middleton fell down, couldn't keep it inside the line. And Chartraw off to Ganey. He lost it. Middleton to Rattel, broken up. Englum trying to move. He's checked. Rattel to Rick Smith. Into the corner. Englum and Middleton. And Englum ties it up. And the faceoff to the right of Dryden. 11.58 left in the first period. 2-0 Boston. Well, this game is far from over with 11.58 left to play in the first period. But right at this moment, Boston's forechecking has disorganized the Canadians in their own end. Now, they make that beautiful pass up through the center in their own end, up to center ice to those streaking forwards. But the forwards are having to go back deep into their own end to help the defense because the forechecking has been so effective. So they're nullifying that streaking uh, forward by the Canadians out through the center, at least at this moment. Middleton a shot off the faceoff as Miller took it. First appearance by Miller between Cashman and Middleton. And Robinson starts it back. Now to Ganey, off wing side, can't move in. Miller coming back. Miller on Savard, broken up on a poke check. Rick Smith flips it in, though, and he's in the four check. Well, now he moves back as Savard is four checked by Middleton. And around the boards, Miller keeps it in, loses to Savard. Out to Jarvis, to Ganey, up the left side, and barreling. Dope trying to get back. Knocks him down as he checks him into the boards. And the puck jammed up in the corner. Good defensive play by Dope, and the faceoff might be outside the line. Well, Bob Ganey, who has been a tremendous skater for the Canadians in the two games in Montreal, a very strong, elusive player who, once he gets on track, is very tough to move off. Dope stayed with him. He had to turn quickly at center ice went with him. He just managed to tuck the shoulder into the side, right side of Ganey and knock him down and out of the play. Good play by Dope. Marcotte is on against Lafleur. Ooh, left wing. Mondu is the center. Lupian flicks it in. Back for it, Milbury. Trying to come out. Check. Two checkers in. And he elects for the faceoff, and it will be to the right of Cheevers. Goals by Dope from Rattel after 59 seconds as we look at Scotty Bowman. And here is Lupian with Schmatz. And Lupian on to do the police work for the Montreal Canadiens. Had two fights with O'Reilly, won them both. At 6'6", 1974 draft pick, second round out of the Montreal Juniors. Is very tall and rangy, and what he does is uh, just kind of wrap you up like an octopus. And with the score, Boston 2 and Montreal nothing. Bruins Stanley Cup hockey continues after this message. We like your style wherever you work, whatever you do, whatever it is that makes you, you. At the First National Bank of Boston, we like your style. That's why we offer a whole range of banking services to match it. Visit the first and see for yourself. See how our style of banking fits your style of life. Here at the first, we like your style. The first two penalties of the hockey game, both for high sticking, Lupian and Schmatz, 8.52. And I believe Andy Van Hellemann may be trying to settle things down a little bit as we look at the action in the corner. That's Milbury now. There's Lupian, the top of your screen, right-hand corner with Schmatz sort of threatening each other with their sticks, but I think that was a settling down type of call by the referee. Shepard and Marcotte against Mondu and Lafleur. Shepard battles Mondu. It goes back to Robinson. Over to LaPointe, the shot misses. Behind the net, Mondu checked, rolls it off, and Marcotte takes it to Shepard. They work it out. Flip pass, Milbury. Milbury in for Shepard. Tips it in the corner, battles LaPointe, and the Canadians get it. Mondu starts it away to Robinson. Robinson with Lafleur and Mondu is over the line. Marcotte checks back, and the puck goes to Park. Good checking by Marcotte. Shepard back, and a shot in wide of Dryden. Boston leads 2-0. Both teams are short a man. Robinson checked. Shepard into the corner, battling Robinson. 6-3 Robinson, and he looks taller and rangier. Flips it off to Guy Lapointe. Lapointe. 
Off to Mondu. He tips it in the corner. Checked by Park Hard. In the other corner, Lafleur taps it around. Into the stands. Face off will be outside the line. A minute left on the matching penalties. As we look at Brad Park. Outstanding candidate for Norris Trophy. Won by Byrie Robinson last year. Guy Lafleur, who was not the factor in the second game that he was in the first, although he did score the overtime goal, but in the regulation play, he's always dangerous. You've got to watch him, but a couple of good body checks in this first period uh, might straighten things out a little, so Boston's looking to get a hold of him in the corner. Shot starts it back with good stick handling. Coming on Dope. Dope rolled him off. Dope with a goal. Now Cashman off to Rick Smith. Rick Smith, center ice to Rattel, offside. And the face off just inside the Boston line as Jean Rattel is on with Cashman, Rick Smith, and Gary Doak. The Boston defense, 9.49 left in the first period. And there you see the penalties. And Don Cherry, the Bruins coach, as the Bruins hop to a two goal lead. Jarvis and Ganey now with Savard and Englum. The draw to Boston. Dope fires it out. Englund with it. Over to Savard. Savard carries. Jarvis clears in. Cheevers handles it. Ganey checks him. He rolls it around. Almost a penalty there for Cheevers. Ganey keeps it in. Loses to Rick Smith. Smith to Cashman. Cashman to Rick Smith. Now to Dope. And he fires it out. Seven seconds left on the matching penalties. Ganey winding up. Center ice. For Savard. And clubs are at full strength. The Bruins rush. Cashman. Can't get it to Schmutz. And now Rattel. Big play. Breaks up. Schmutz, uh, shot. Gets it back again. Cashman trying to move with it. Can't. A rolling puck. Rick Smith. Clears it up. A deflection into the penalty box. And a face off at center ice. Now the pace has slowed without that big enthusiasm, but this is what I'm sure Don Cherry wants, a pace like this. Well, I'm sure he's much more pleased about the pace as the way as we see it right now. But uh, the Bruins forwards, if they can watch the wingman coming through center ice, that Boston defense can stand up. Very important because that's the kind of thing that slows your offense down. If they can break enough of those Canadian drives up at the blue line, they can slow this tempo. Big line on for the Canadians. And McNabb gets it from Schmatz, who's at right wing. Jonathan left wing, and they clear it in the Canadian end. LaPointe with Jonathan right on him. He's hit. Schmatz trying to keep it in. Battles. Still battles. And it goes to Shut. Shut to Lafleur. And he's got Milbury to beat. Broken up by Mike Milbury. A good quick poke check on Lafleur. As they were one on one, and Jonathan works at center ice. Jonathan with McNabb, three on two. McNabb with Schmatz. McNabb going in. Oh, pass in front, and Jonathan couldn't get it. And the Canadians trying to work it out as Jonathan was hit on the play. Schmatz intercepts, flips it right back in. Uh, Milbury it was for checking in the corner. John? A good check by Milbury in the corner as Guy Lafleur turned the wrong way, and Milbury was right there. Scotty Bowman not too pleased about the infraction, but Milbury got him with a good check in the corner as Peter McNabb came through on the right wing side. He flipped a little centery path. Jonathan was streaking through the center, but Guy Lapointe made a very fine play on defense. He blocked Jonathan's body out of the play so he couldn't get in for that centering pass by McNabb, and it went wide. Boston leads 2-0. Shepard, Schmott stays at right wing with Marcotte. Schmott's intercepts. Pass up, stopped by Savard. He's on with Robinson. To Lafleur. To shut. He could be offside. Cheevers handles this one, though. Clears it around. Rick Smith trying to move it out. Shepard with it. Shepard gets it off on the right wing side, but shut is there. Now Lafleur over the line. Off for Lemaire. The shot very wide. And the rebound, shot knocked down, penalty, Schmatz, interference. He knocked down, shot in the corner, and he hadn't touched the puck, and it's a power play for Montreal, as the Bruins lead it 2-0, with the score of Austin 2 and Montreal nothing. You're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs. Midnight is mystery. Midnight is excitement. Now, midnight is cougar. 
the Midnight Cat in Midnight Blue and Chamois. A bold new Mercury Cougar XR7 for 78 with deeply cushioned buckets, floor shift, console, and padded tire deck. Cougar XR7 Midnight Cat. Isn't this your year to join the cat set? <laughs> The mistakes can be costly against the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Bobby Schmatz, a questionable play here, knocking Steve shut down. Interference is called, 12-24. Don Cherry just uh, gave a shake to Scotty Bowman on the bench because Bowman's been hassling the referee for a lack of calls. He feels that possibly Bowman was responsible for getting this call on the Bruins, and he was just sort of giving him the, che the, the uh, Yankee cheer. Rajon Uhl is at center, Lambert left wing. Yvonne Lambert, Yvonne Conway is right wing. Guy Lafleur, the right point. Guy Lapointe is back at the blue line, too. So four forwards, and Marcotte is still arguing with Van Hellemont as Shepard and Marcotte, Clark and Rick Smith. The draw to Boston, and they clear it out. Marcotte with it, moves it to the Canadian line. Lapointe. To Ool, to Lambert. They play it in behind the net. Rick Smith can't clear it out. Lafleur keeps it in, intercepted by Marcotte as Lafleur try to set it up. And over the line, Shepard shot wide, rebound. Rick Smith shot, save Dryden. Shepard keeps it in. Now knocks it back to the Boston end. Ool down the forecheck. Park is there. Park wheels it around and out. No icing. And the Bruins have had a shot while shorthanded. 115 left on the penalty. Lafleur trying to come out. Shepard after him. He gives it to LaPointe. They fire in the corner. Cheever's out. Hangs on. He was going to whirl, drop it, and try and clear it. But a quick whistle from Van Hellemond, and Cheevers will go for a quick whistle, and <laughs> his mobility even more in evidence in this game tonight. Well, he's been very sharp in goal all, all series long as we look at the coach of the Montreal Canadiens, Scotty Bowman. Boston out in front, 2-0. Goals by Doak and Middleton in the first period. 104 left on the penalty to Bobby Schmatz. Shepard and Jonathan now. Shepard gets the draw to Milbury. Can't clear it. Robinson, big reach, keeps it in. The Lemaire, pass up, deflected to the corner. Cheevers out of the net, wheels it around the boards. Shepard clears it out. Big play by Cheevers. Astounding mobility with the team shorthanded. LaPointe clears it right in. Again, Cheevers on it. Again, making the play. Up the dasher. Marcotte, Jonathan. They work it out. 37 seconds left on the penalty to Schmatz. 6 10 left, first period, 2 0 Boston. Robinson. Ready to wind up. Off to LaPointe. And Marcotte broke it up, but trailing. LeMaire has it. LeMaire over the line. Check. Oh, he is hit by Brad Clark. The check. One of the best of the series as he rattled it with a hip check. And LeMaire lost control to Marcotte. 12 seconds left on the penalty. Goat, Rick Smith on. The Canadians rush LeFleur. Over the line, streaking, trying to go through. Shot. And he spilled, and the shot went wide, and he came close. And Jonathan clears. Schmott is on, goes down, and Dryden has to play it. No icing. Robinson fires it out. What a check, Brad Park on LeMaire. Back comes Middleton. Middleton to Schmatz. Schmatz knocked, fell down, and LaPointe has it in the corner. Middleton forechecking. 5.18 left. Always a dangerous moment here, just after you've killed the penalty. As Mondu clears it in, and the play offside, 5-10 left, and a chance now for the line to get organized as Middleton and Schmutz move to the attack there. Well, a continuation of the same great action as here is Jacques Lemaire. Watch the hip check by Park. Beautiful move. And Milbury rushed out at the blue line, sending Lemaire to one side. When he tried to come back, Park knew where he was going to go, put the hip on him, and you saw him. Beautiful check. Bruins work it out to Cashman. Cashman into Rattel. Can't hang on. Engblom with Rattel in pursuit. Rattel checking him to the corner. And ties him up as Jean Rattel has figured in both Boston goals with assists. And he tied up Engblom, who does not have the mobility. There is Park with that great hip check. Stay with us during tonight's first intermission. Tom Larson 
We'll have highlights from game two of the Stanley Cup final series played Tuesday night in Montreal. It's that kind of forechecking by Rattel that's drawing the Canadian forwards deeper into their own end than usual, which is taking away, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is very His middle end with the puck. In front, and Kasperin fanned on the shot. A hard, quick pass behind the net. Middleton with it. Middleton off in the corner to Kasperin, and he missed it. Overskated it, and Ganey rushes out. Ganey clears it in, checked by Doak. Back for Kasperin. Wheels it around. Jarvis and Rick Smith going for it. In the corner, jammed up. Heavy hitting there. Rattel works it free. Off for Doak. And Doak is out with Middleton. To Middleton, coming up on Engblom. Trying to cut inside. Dope moves in. The puck rides free as Dope got a shot, but wide. Ganey trying to come out. Rattel checks him. Ganey gets away from Rattel. Starts it back to Englum. Englum by Middleton. Over the line. Broken up by Dope. Rick Smith to Rattel. He's checked. And Dope takes a run at Ool and misses him. Rick Smith round the boards and out. As Wensink is hit by Robinson. 3.51 left first period. 2-0 Boston. O'Reilly a hard hit on Bouchard. Penalty coming up. No. No penalty. I'm sorry. That was a linesman with his hand up. <laughs> 3.41 left in the first period. 2-0 Boston. Bouchard and O'Reilly. Chin to chin. Separated by the linesman. O'Reilly caught Bouchard a good check at center ice. Well, the two best teams in the National Hockey League, the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens, going at it. Live from Boston Garden, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup Finals. Come to Meat Street USA at the finest for some of the best meat your money can buy. Our finest value trim assures you that you're paying for good meat and not waste. And every piece of meat is guaranteed for freshness. And when it comes to beef, all our beef is USDA choice. So it's guaranteed, flavorful, and juicy. The date tells you it's fresh, the color tells you it's fresh, and the USDA choice symbol assures you of top quality. So come to Meat Street USA at the finest and see what a difference quality really makes. The finest, first for values. Well, here's a move by Scotty Bowman. He's got Larry Robinson at left wing. Lafleur is at center. Ool right wing. Robinson, who is great mobility, good puck carrier, and uh, hits hard in the corners. McNabb, Marcotte, Schmatz for Boston. McNabb gets the draw to Milbury. Milbury flips it out. Lapointe and Bouchard at the Montreal defense. So let's see how Robinson works as a forward, and he's played there before. Park breaks up Bouchard. A pass up rolls to Park. To Schmutz, and it's flipped into the Canadian end. McNabb in the forecheck on LaPointe. Forcing a pass around. Schmutz guarding Robinson. Lafleur flicks it out. No! Marcotte keeps it in. Blocked by Dryden. Off now for LaPointe. LaPointe's pass blocked by Milbury. Trying to set the play back. He's checked. And the puck jammed up in front of the Boston bench. Bowman has so many varieties, uh, so many talented players, and so many moves he can make. We were talking about it, John. He could make three wrong moves, and they'd be all right, whereas uh, the coach for the Washington Capitol uh, can hardly make one. Well, that's about the size of it, Fred. But uh, Larry Robinson playing left wing fine on the power play because he can roam around. But it's tough for him to get adjusted to that left wing position, and he's not playing it very well. Boston could take advantage of it. But the Canadians keep it in now. Cornway up to LeMaire. Save Cheevers the beauty. And the puck over on the boards. LeMaire lined that one up. LeMaire again checked by McNabb into the corner. And Park starts it away with a good shift to Milbury, to Schmatz. Schmatz fires in, and LeMaire lined that one up. And Cheevers, great stop. Marcotte drives as he stole the puck. And the save, Dryden, kept in by McNabb. McNabb, good body position to Schmatz behind the net. Schmatz checked, knocked down by Englum. Gets up, throws a punch at Englum. The Canadians try to move it out. Shut, checked by Park with a rattling hit. And it's off McNabb to Schmatz, played in the Montreal zone. 2-10 left, first period, 2-0 Boston. Savard gets it back. Pass up, blocked by Marcotte. Shuts pass, knocked down by Rick Smith to Marcotte. To Middleton. Middleton has to go to the corner to handle it. Takes a hit from Englund and is knocked down in the corner. The puck is taken by the Canadians. Lemaire winding up. 
Long shot saved Cheevers. And Cashman the rebound. He kicked it out to him brilliantly. Cashman over the line. Pat Middleton free and elected to go for a shot. A good play, but Dryden saw Middleton and there was no rebound as Cashman fired from 40 feet. And the Bruins have outshot the Canadians for sure here in the first period. Uh, we saw as fine a game Tuesday night at the Montreal Forum as you'll want to see between the Canadians and the Bruins. The Canadians finally won it at 13.09 of the first sudden death overtime. But here in the first period of the Boston Garden, this has been sensational, crowd-pleasing action. 138 left to play first period. Boston out in front, 2-0 on goals by Doak and Middleton. Rattel, Middleton, and uh, Cashman. The draw to Middleton, a shot, a save, Dryden, as he whipped a quick backhander. Ganey works it out, clears it in on Cheevers. He covers up with Lafleur right there. Face off in the Boston end, 128 left. The Bruins have been winning most of the faceoffs, no matter what center is out there. And this now is Jarvis against Rattel, and Jarvis rated as uh, possibly the best in the league at winning faceoffs. He's centering Ganey and Lafleur. The Bruins win it as Rattel got it back to Cheevers and Cheevers to Cashman and he clears it out with 1.22 left in the period. Robinson to Ganey. Met by a stand-up check by Rattel. The puck into the corner. Dope. Checked by Lafleur. Lafleur behind the net. Rolls it out in front. Lapointe a shot. Hit the post. And Cashman. A quick flip into the Boston bench. And Guy Lapointe drilled one then. And hit the post to the left of Jerry Cheevers. Well, the discipline of the Bruin forwards has uh, broken down right here. Watch the play go back to Gila Point. Now, there's nobody out there on that point, man. When the puck goes behind the net in the Boston end, those forwards have got to look after those point men under Don Cherry's system. Sometimes they're not quite as disciplined. They don't turn quick enough and pick up their man. Here comes the pass. Lafleur back to the point, and he hit the goal post. The draw in the Boston end. Shepard with it. And he gets it to center ice. Lafleur flicks it back in. Ooh, ridden off by Park. Back to get it. Milbury to Park. Park starts it away. Good play, Park. Out to O'Reilly. O'Reilly fires it in off Lapointe. Jonathan and Lapointe go into the corner. Hard. He takes Lapointe and is knocked down. Jonathan is on the rebound of it. Lapointe coming out. A tripping call on Jonathan. Delayed call. Robinson with it over the line. Puck kept in now as O'Reilly tags Robinson with 27 seconds left. A tripping call on Jonathan after he took a wicked hit from Guy Lapointe off the boards. He went barreling into Lapointe and down Jonathan went on the rebound. 27 seconds left in the period and the Canadians get their second power play of the first period and of the game. There were earlier matching penalties. Well, here's the penalty coming up. Jonathan trying to contain Guy Lapointe. Now, at that moment, he realized he should let him go because he's coming out of his own end. Uh, at that moment, he's harmless. Somebody else will pick him up. You cannot afford to take those kind of penalties against the Montreal Canadiens' vaunted power play. We have 27 seconds left here in the first period. Jonathan off for a holding at 19.33. Goals by Doak and Rick Middleton. Shepard on the draw. Fought for. Shut. Back to Savard, left point. Into Lemaire. Check. Shut with it. Back to Savard. Screenshot. Save Cheevers, and he covers up. As Larry Robinson was jamming Rick Smith right at the crease, they have Robinson up as a forward. 15 seconds left. Cheevers, big stop. So well, watch Robinson, a big, strong defenseman playing on the forward line. Now, he can cause a lot of havoc in front. Rick Smith tried to contain him, but Cheevers, very fortunate to get that rebound on a big stop on a drive by Serge Savard from the left point. 15 seconds left in the period. Robinson is at right wing, and he heads for the crease to bother Cheevers and screen him. On the draw, back to Savard again. To Lefleur. Lefleur fires tipped high in the corner. Bruins fight for it. Lemaire there. Park. Park trying to freeze it. Falls down. Lemaire gets it three. One second left. And that's it. The period ends as Lemaire got it over in front of the net. And the first period ends. 133 left on the penalty to Jonathan starting the second period. The score at the end of the first period. The Bruins two and the Canadians nothing. Boston Bruins Stanley Cup hockey continues in Jonathan. Opening the 
garage door. Stanley, the do-it-yourself company, thinks this is one thing you shouldn't have to do yourself. Presenting the Stanley Automatic Garage Door Opener. It saves you money because it's made to install yourself. At the push of a button, it opens the door, lights the light, closes the door, and locks it securely. The do-it-yourself garage door opener from Stanley. We want to help you do things right. Now available at all Caldor and Bradley stores. You can take away my drama. Take away the bass. You can take away my guitar picker and close down the place. You can take away my keyboard. I can swing at night or day. Just please don't take my gusto away. If you don't have sense, you don't have gusto. And brother, you don't have beer. You were beautiful. Bill and Betty flew to Florida on Delta Airlines for their honeymoon. And look who came along. Betty's mom and dad. Thanks, mother. You see, four people can vacation for the same price as two on a Delta Fly Drive. You get a car for seven days to roam all over Florida. And a room for four people for six nights anywhere you stop. All for just $197 to $419, depending on the car you choose, plus Delta Airfare. Call your travel agent and make it a foursome in Florida. Delta is ready when you are. Ever see a Sunday smile? You, you're the one. You, with that Sunday smile. You, you're the one. You make it all worthwhile. Vanilla swirls with hot fudge. Strawberry caramel too. Buy a McDonald's Sunday and get a coupon for a free string of Candleton Bowling when you buy one string. Get details at participating McDonald's only. It's almost too much to expect, I guess, to get uh, two games back-to-back, -back, such as we are having as of tonight. That's going back to uh, game two in Montreal, of course. But uh, that was an outstanding hockey game, as you well know, and tonight's is starting out exactly the same way. Here between the first and second period this evening, we, uh, we have some of the action highlights of that uh, second game. That was the game won by Montreal by a score of 3-2. And, of course, it's a game that went into overtime in Montreal and gave uh, Montreal a lead of two games to none. Let's get a look now at some of the action highlights of uh, play from the uh, first 60 minutes of that game. Back to Park. Up to O'Reilly. On the boards. Check. Works it to Park, though. Shot in. Scored! Brad Park! Whistle it into the far corner with John Wensick moving across in front. And Wensick might have touched it, but Park fired it in the corner, and it is 1-0 Boston. Well, I think Ken Dryden may have lost sight of this very soft shot by Brad Park. Not a very hard drive. Watch O'Reilly set him up beautifully. He just sort of flipped it in front. Wensink was there. I don't know if he touched it or not. Golfs it back to Robinson. A drive. Save. Cheevers. Rebound. What a play. Cheevers with something. Got a loose and fired in the empty net. Steve Shutt ties it up. Cornway moving it in front. Now watch Shutt come from the side of the net as he picks up the loose puck from the point shot by Robinson. Right here he moves in. Cheevers with a great stick save. But the rebound right to Shutt. And he fired it in the open corner. Lemire. Broken up. Here's a breakaway. Shepard. There it go. All alone. The point gets back. Here comes Shepard. He is broken up by Brad. And upended in the corner. And the stolen by Spots. And he can't drive it home. Shepard tries to. And Dryden ties it up. Up to Ganey. Out to Ool. Now to Jarvis. With Ganey coming up. Ganey shot. Score! Little drop pass. Ganey. What the drive and watch Cheevers from our end zone. Beautiful shot. Pass up, stopped by Rick Smith. Ahead to McNabb. Pokes it ahead. O'Reilly into the corner against LaPointe. 
O'Reilly leaves it for McNabb. Can't center it to Cashman. Cashman behind the net. Gets it. Moves it in front. Shot. Score! Rick Smith! Rick Smith moved in and fired to the corner. And the Bruins tie it up with 4-12 left. O'Reilly to McNabb in front of the behind the net to Cashman. Now watch this play here. Rick Smith coming in from his point position. And he just tipped it into that far corner. Action from the overtime session coming up right after this. Say, what cars do you chauffeurs recommend? Well, you could drive a Rolls. Or a Duesenberg, of course. But if you really want to know, it's Rabbits we endorse. Ah, the Champagne Edition Rabbits. There's something special, they're really too much. With stunning colors and seats soft to the touch. It's a Champagne, Champagne Edition. Don't ask us why. They'll only be available in a limited supply. Champagne Volkswagen does it again. This is the Green Monster at Fenway Park. And if you think your house paint takes a beating, look at this. What keeps the Green Monster green? California, best paint in the East. Cheaper paints might fade or chip or peel, but the California paint can take this kind of beating. Think how it could protect your house. California paint. With hundreds of dealers, you'll find yours in the yellow pages. Nothing covers the wall like California. During the Mighty May Sale at Jordan Marsh, I can save 25 to 50% and more. This week only, save 40% on men's vested spring suits, just $89.99. American Tourister's lightweight nylon luggage is now 25 to 40% off. Men's woven and knit sport shirts, now $7.99 to $9.99. And save 50% and more on assorted fashion comforters, just $19.99. All this week at Jordan Marsh. Jordan's Mighty May Sale makes mighty good sense. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel-belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. This is TV 38, WSBK-TV, Boston. We're at the end of the first period tonight. Boston 2, Montreal nothing. Shots on goal in the first period, Boston 10. And uh, Montreal 7, checking some of the, uh, the highlights of action from game 2, which is a game that was won by the Montreal Canadiens. It was 2-2 at the end of regulation time in Montreal in that uh, second game. Jerry Cheevers put on an unprecedented goaltending show in the overtime, but Montreal took it nonetheless. Here's some of the action from overtime. Shepard on the draw, shot, save! Conway with it, save! Another shot goes wide! And the puck goes to Robinson. Wheels, a drive, and hit the side of the net. Oh, how the Canadians missed on that. We'll never know. Another one, loose in front. Back there to Lambert, there. This is the net. In the corner, Schmatz can't move it out. A drive, block, a save, a save, Cheevers! Joey Cheevers! Magnificent! As Conway is down, hurt, Goat seems stunned too. And you couldn't count the number of shots that the Canadians had. And if you count the ones that missed the net, it has to be about eight. Well, unbelievable goaltending by Jerry Cheevers as he came way out of his net to stop Cornway. But after this, there were four shots on goal. Cheevers stopped three of them. There's one. Now watch Cornway as he's inside by the left right-hand corner of the net. As Cheevers, or either Shepard, tried to clear it. Here's Cornway right there. Number one. Here he goes again. An unbelievable action in the Boston end of the ice overtime action. And there's Cornway, one, two, and Cheevers finally grabbed it. Standing ovation, Jerry Cheevers. Robinson the rebound, he winds up. Robinson, center ice. To Lafleur, streaking, shoots, scores! Montreal Canadiens to the tremendous game that they played here. Here's the drive by Lafleur. Watch the puck. 
between the left pad and the goal post of Cheevers, who had played himself a sensational game. Montreal won at 3-2, went up in games 2-0. This is game three. We'll be back with more right after this. I'm Jackie Stewart. I know a wee bit about making cars go. Unfortunately, they don't go as well as they used to. One reason, unleaded gasolines. Most don't have the power that gasolines had. Well, Getty Unleaded Regular does. It delivers more power than most other major unleadeds. As a racing driver, that appeals to me. It costs less, too. <laughs> as a Scotsman, that really appeals to me. Getty Unleaded Regular. More power for less money. Here are some more American Airlines super fares to help you save money. Our super saver to Los Angeles is only $230 round trip. Save 40% round trip to almost any place we fly and 50% to some night coach cities with American Airlines super fares. We're American Airlines, doing what we do best. And helping you save money is one of the things we do best. Through the ages, man has always looked forward to one very special night of the week. Thank God it's... We are out for action tonight. I'm Babakazoo. I'd like to take you home now. There's been a zillion Friday nights since time began, but you'll never see one quite like this. Thank God it's Friday, rated PG. Starting tomorrow at the Sac Family Boston, Sac Natick, Cinema Fibre Showcase Cinemas in Dedham and Woburn, and the Cynical Cinema in Brookline. This is our gang. Say hi, gang. Hi! And we're off to make a movie, right? Hi! With the Kodak Our Gang movie camera. Kodak could have fancied it up, but they didn't. <laughs> Made it simple. Kept the cost down. With just a viewfinder to look through and a button to push. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Sure, there are a lot of other places we could have spent our money. But our gang movies mean everything to us. The Kodak Our Gang movie camera. Less than $100 at a photo dealer near you. After the hockey game tonight, uh, we have a lot of baseball. All of it from Detroit before game four of this series on Sunday. It will be the Red Sox and the Tigers tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, and the Sunday doubleheader at 1.30. And that'll be prior to the uh, hockey game, game four of the series between the Bruins and Montreal on Sunday night from Boston Garden. And that will be an 8 o'clock start time. I uh, would also like to mention that uh, guests appearing on our Bruins intermission program will receive a portable multi-band radio from Magnavox. You'll hear a world of excitement from five different radio bands, including FM shortwaves and public service. The Bruins leading Montreal 2-0 at the end of one period, and second period action is coming up here in just a minute. Gary Doak scored the first of the, the uh, playoffs for him, the first of the night for the Bruins, 59 seconds in to make it 1-0 Boston. Rick Middleton's fifth of the playoffs, and the first of this series by uh, anyone other than a defenseman. That was at 5-11, 2-0 Boston, shots on goal in the first period, the Bruins 10, the Montreal Canadiens 7. And we have second period action coming up with Fred Cusick and John Pearson right after this. How much will your new car be worth after it becomes a used car? Well, if it's one of these, it won't be worth as much as one of these, the Oldsmobile Cutlass. Since 1973, Cutlass has had a higher resale value than any of those other cars. So if you've got a used Cutlass, bring it into your New England Oldsmobile dealer for a new one. If you don't have a used Cutlass, buy a new one and wait. When you deliver fresh cream to Hendry's, it better be fresh. Because if it isn't fresh, it doesn't go into Hendry's ice cream. At Hendry's, they like their cream fresh. Mister, I think we got a nice fresh cream here. If the cream isn't fresh, it doesn't go into Hendry's, the fresh cream ice cream. You guys had me worried there. I'm Tom Russell, reminding you that the new Big Money Game gives you a new million-dollar TV game every week. And you could get your chance at a million by matching just one digit. That's what June Lewis of Wendell Depot did. On February 22nd, just three weeks after the start of the new game, she became our first new Big Money Game millionaire. She won $50,000 a year for 20 years. You could win, too. 
Just play the new big money game with a new million dollar game every week. When we were chartered as the Provident Institution for Savings, savings was our only business. But we've added a lot of services since then. So now we could call ourselves the Provident Institution for Savings, Loans, Now Accounts, Retirement Plans, Check Cashing Cards, Term Deposits, Mortgages, Savings Bank, Life Insurance, Direct Deposits, Bill Paying, etc. But if our name told you everything we do, our sign might be a problem. So you could call us the Provident Institution for everything. Well, the hockey players know they have to dig down a little deeper for that something extra. We see the kind of tremendous action we saw here in the first period as the Montreal Canadiens and the Boston Bruins battle here in the third game of the finals for Stanley Cup 1978. Montreal leading two games to none on the strength of two victories at the Montreal Forum in the first game. Four to one Canadians. Lambert scored the winner in the second one. 3-2 Canadians in overtime at 13.09. Guy Lafleur put the Canadians out in front two games to none. But here it's been a different story in the first period as Boston came storming out with great forechecking, setting the Canadians back in their own end, which is something it's very difficult to do. But Boston out in front on goals by Doak and Middleton. And a big important penalty. Stan Jonathan's in the penalty box. He has one. 33 left to serve on the two-minute penalty for a holding called at 1933 of the first period. Game four will be played Sunday night at the Boston Garden. Game time will be at 8.05. And Fred, tremendous action. Well, we've talked about Guy Lafleur and his great talents, but that Robinson uh, was used so much by Scotty Bowman, used as a forward, uh, has taken his regular shift. Uh, big man, uh, very mobile, can do a lot, and we expect to see him on this power play too. Well, we've always talked about uh, good skaters, and most of the good skaters over the years have been small men, but Larry Robinson, a big, strong defenseman who can skate with the best of them, a very, very mobile defenseman who can go to his left and to his right with uh, equal dexterity. And we're now all set for second period action. Boston shorthanded. Here's Fred Kusick. And Shepard and Marcotte, Park and Milbury against uh, Lemaire, Shutt, Lafleur with the two defensemen, Lapointe and Robinson. The draw, and Milbury back to get it. Park knocked down by Shutt. Milbury taking his time and clearing. 120 left on the penalty to Stan Jonathan. The Canadians. Robinson off to Lapointe. Lapointe into Lafleur. Lafleur in. Stopped it. And Shepard got it with a key play as Lafleur dropped it behind him. And Shutt keeps it in. His pass blocked. Milbury trying to knock it out. Does. Gets it off to Shepard. Shepard center ice. What a play Shepard made as Lafleur dropped that one. Shepard knocks it in for Park. Park checked by Lafleur. Takes a hit. And Milbury gets the puck. And the clear as Milbury is hit by Shutt. 45 seconds left. Lafleur made a behind-the-back pass, drawing Cheevers out, but Shepard intercepted. Robinson rushes. Broken up by Park. Park, quick clear. What a play Brad Park made on Robinson. And Miller is out now with Schmops. 30 seconds left on the penalty. Here comes Ganey up the left side. The shot saved Cheevers. And the clear by Brad Park. And that one stung Gary Cheevers. Trying to figure out where he took it. He is stung by that one. Right hand, the stick hand, as Ganey unloaded a heavy shot. Jarvis rushes, center ice, the clear in, the rebound. Schmops on it, and he clears it out. Jonathan out, and this will be icing. And we're looking at Cheevers, who takes off his glove. It's the right hand. The backhand glove, a tremendous drive by Bob Ganey. Cheevers stayed right with it parried it with the backhand glove, but you can tell that's a piece of uh, fiberglass uh, on the back there, but that, that shot was so heavy and so hard that it went right through it, and uh, Cheevers really felt that one. That's called the blocker, and that's where he carries the stick as he lines up for the faceoff. The Bruins killed off the penalty. They lead 2-0. Risebro against McNabb. Puck to Jonathan. Loses it to Cornwallier. He's broken up by Rick Smith. Back up the boards. It's cleared out. Icing call. And the faceoff back in the Boston end. 
And you saw Savard step in front of Jonathan. You talked about the interference. You wouldn't want to call it there. It would be a little too fine. But that prevented him from rushing down and preventing the icing. Now Stan Jonathan, who as we look at Lou Nanny in the center, he's the coach and general manager of the Minnesota North Stars. He's the guest commentator uh, for uh, on national TV. Bruins with the puck. Jonathan off to O'Reilly. O'Reilly coming on Englund, looking for McNabb. A pass in. Jonathan couldn't handle it. Gets it in the corner. Is hit hard by Savard. With it, McNabb to O'Reilly. To McNabb, knocked down. Shoots, save. Rick Smith trying to keep it in. Can't. Dope does with a big play at the line. The Bruins press. O'Reilly behind the net. Checked by Englund. The puck around the boards. Dope moves in. In deep to O'Reilly. Another hard hit from Englund. And back to get it, Savard. To Cornway. He's hit by Jonathan. And Rick Smith clears it. Jo and taken by Cornway. Picks up speed. Drops it off to Risebro. He can't handle it as McNabb checked it. Ryan Englund. Avoids a check by O'Reilly. Cheevers gets it around the boards to Jonathan. Oh, he is up in it. Cut from behind, and Rick Smith tab Ganey. In the boards, O'Reilly battles. Clears it out as the Canadians now come with some hard hits. And the point right back. Clearing in, knocked down by O'Reilly. Out to center ice. Englum, a pass up. Stopped by Dope. Dope clearing in. Wide of Dryden. Cashman for checking, and the puck goes right out to Park, center ice. He's broken up by Chartra, who couldn't break with it. Cashman gets it, starts away. For Rattel, Rattel to Cashman, fed in. Middleton is at right wing, Cashman left wing, Rattel at center. In the corner, Middleton on it. Comes out of the corner once for Rattel, and then hopped over his stick. He would have been in at all. Great play by Middleton. Back comes Jarvis with Ganey. Puck fired in. Cheevers. Try to clear it off. Jarvis to LaPointe. Shot in. Save Cheevers. And he covers up. With the score of Austin 2 and Montreal nothing, the 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs continue in just a moment. Schlitz Light. Schlitz Light beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Is that what that guy always drinks? That's his beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. I'll have a Schlitz Light. Make it two. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. Jacques Lemaire with Lafleur and Shutt on the wings. The Boston Shepherd, Schmatz and Markov. Face off in the Boston end. Markov, a false move. Milbury and Park on defense. LaPointe and Robinson for Montreal. The draw, Shepard had it, but it goes to LaPointe. Markov trying to move it out. Check. Now Milbury. Out for Schmatz. Pass up, stopped by Lafleur. LaPointe, Robinson. Shut and he's broken up. And Schmatz can't feed it in. Lafleur winding up again. Now LaPointe. A quick clear in wide. Back for it first. Schmatz ahead of shot. Turns, picks up speed, gets it to Marcotte. To Schmatz on the move. But they can't convert. And Park on the loose puck. Flips it up. Robinson drives it back. Milbury intercepts. Knocks down Robinson and clears it in. Crowd yelling at the check by Milbury on Robinson. Shepard trying to break up Robinson. Robinson drives it out. Lafleur collects. And the Canadians offside as Lemaire and Shutt try to handle that pass from Guy Lafleur. Boston letting the Canadians control the puck too much of the time here in the second period. That can be very costly because eventually Canadians start to turn the momentum in their favor. They've had the puck too much of the time here in the second period by the fact that Boston is not making that good play once they control the puck. They've got to look up and hit their open man. They're not doing it. They're flipping it into center ice and the Canadians are coming right back. Doak and Middleton have the goals. We're in the second period. About five minutes played. Mondu breaks away. Gets it over the line to Risebro. He has to go back for it. A pass up stop by McNabb and a quick clear out by the Bruins. McNabb with O'Reilly and Jonathan. Rick Smith and Doak. Savard winds up. 
Pass up, bounces free, and McNabb gets it and clears it back in. The Canadians just drill that puck up. This is Gilles Lupien. Intercepted by Middleton. Middleton to Jonathan, to Rick Smith. The pass blocked. Now Middleton gets it off the boards. Middleton can't make a play. Risebro with it. Bruins defensive minded here as Risebro is checked by McNabb, who falls down. Play broken up by Middleton. Checked by Lupian. And bounce to the Boston bench. A faceoff called at center ice. 14-30 left. Second period, 2-0 Boston. With the score of the Bruins, 2 the Canadians, nothing. This is Boston Bruins, Stanley Cup hockey. Ford introduces Futura, a dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Futura, designed by computer modeling and aerodynamic testing. It can provide excellent fuel economy and room for five passengers as well. Futura, designed for 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your New England Ford dealer today. Now Boston has not had a power play. The Canadians have had two. The Bruins have a two goal lead. Bob Miller started back and Van Hellemann is not going to let the Bruins make that change. Miller has to go back to the bench. Mondu is centering Risebro left and Ool on the right. Puck to Rick Smith. Flips it in. Jonathan in on Englund. Checks him in hard. Englund bounces. McNabb in on Englund. Puck to Ool. Ool starts it away. Midland back checking. The puck fed in wide. Cheevers taps it to the corner. Rick Smith with it. Up to McNabb. McNabb checked by Mondu. Rick Smith gets it. Breaks it out with Middleton. Is intercepted by Ool. Ool lost it. And Rick Smith and Ool collide. Robinson trying to come out. Now to Mondu. Mondu gets by Dope. Gets it over the line. Is broken up by Middleton. Middleton a clear out. Lead pass too far for Jonathan. And the Canadians come back, but McNabb breaks it up for Jonathan. Jonathan hit by Risebro. With it, McNabb. With Middleton. McNabb trying to go straight ahead himself, and the play is called offside. And Rick Middleton has not only been a star offensively, with five goals and one tonight on a great individual effort, but a star defensively as well. Well, he made a great play over there on the right wing, just inside the Boston blue line, knocking the puck off, I believe, Riseborough's stick as he was trying to move down that left wing side for the Canadians. 13-36 left to play second period. Boston leading 2-0 on two goals in the first period. 59 seconds, Gary Doak, and at 5-11, Rick Middleton. Bob Miller is at right wing. Never seen him play there. Rattel at center, Cashman left wing. Pass up to Jarvis. Check. Park up. Trying to get it. Now with it, Milbury. To Cashman. He's checked. Rattel trying to move in. Can't. Milbury gets it center ice. Flips it back in. Miller moves in on Savard. Now Rattel. Savard's pass too far. Goes all the way down. Cheevers signals Park. Gives it to him. Park hit by Ganey. Oh, a rattling check. And they battle in the corner. And Ganey wants to go at him. And Milbury comes over. And Ganey would like nothing better than to take Park out of there. His main intent. And let's see how Van Hellemann calls this. Don Cherry says, I don't want Park to get into any battles, any fights like this. And, of course, Ganey wants to take him out of there, and Ganey is. They're both going out. A hard hit by Bob Ganey in the corner started it all. I think he had his stick up a little high. But Andy Van Hellemann is calling penalties here as Milbury moved in very quickly. The danger of that, of course, is a third man in. But I don't think we're going to have anything like that on this one. But Park exchange for Ganey, not a good exchange for the Bruins. Live from Boston Garden, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup Finals. Now Eastern Airlines lets you see the people you've been wanting to see. With super savings everywhere in the U.S., 30 to 40 percent off. So a couple from New York can be with their son in South Carolina. A young doctor from Chicago can be with his family in Atlanta. And a little girl from Philadelphia can be with her friends in Walt Disney World. Take advantage of Eastern Super Savings Everywhere and get together with the people you love. Well, here's
there's the play coming up. Park trying to turn Ganey here around on the Boston end. Now watch Ganey. Watch the stick right there. That's what Park objected to, and that should have been a two-minute high-sticking penalty on Ganey. But none was called, and they get two minutes each for roughing at 7.03. But Ganey's stick was very high on that play. Could have been a minor penalty, as that's what Park took objection to. Well, both teams are short a man. 12.57 left in the second period. Lemaire and Lafleur out there with Robinson and LaPointe. Shepard and Marcotte, Doak and Rick Smith. LaPointe clears it in. Cheever's handling. Left it for Rick Smith. Up the middle off, Shepard bounces to the Canadian end. LaPointe with Shepard. Checking the Bruins all inside the line. Now Shepard after LaPointe trying to force a pass that's bad and he does. But Rick Smith's pass blocked by LaPointe. LaPointe avoids a Marcotte check. The puck goes in. And Bruins playing it very carefully and that's understandable in this situation. As the puck is cleared out by Rick Smith. Robinson back for it. Now to LaFleur. Marcotte picking up LaFleur. LaFleur flips away. Winding up. Marcotte after him. Gets it off to LaPointe. Bad pass and Doak clears. Great play by Marcotte. Lemaire will try it now. And this could be icing. Well, won't reach the red line. Back foot Rick Smith. Behind the net. Checked by LaPointe. Falls on the puck. A smart move by Rick Smith. 48 seconds left on the matching penalties. And the Bruins realize in a situation where some empty ice for players like LaPointe, Robinson, Lemaire, and Lafleur. They all individually can move, but Marcotte is right on Lafleur. Well, the idea that Marcotte was trying to get through to the Canadians is to slow the man down who has the puck and make him more deliberate, which, of course, slows the other players down. They cannot move until that puck carrier moves with the puck. Marcotte did an excellent job at the Canadian blue line, just slowing Canadians down enough to prevent that sort of breakaway speed that they are so famous for. Rattel is out with Schmatz, Milbury and Rick Smith now. The draw out of Boston. Lost, regained. Now slides out and Schmatz may have a breakaway. Here comes Schmatz. After it is Savard, he is a shot block. Rebound. Shot Milbury. Save. Puck cleared out. Hooking call on Montreal. Could be a penalty shot. Savard for hooking. And Schmatz was in the clear. That's a penalty shot if I ever saw one. With the score, Boston 2, Montreal nothing. Bruins Stanley Cup hockey continues after this message. You can use any lure man's ever invented. You can fish early morn or sundown. Plain truth is, you've got to be where the fish are. Same thing for the business person trolling for customers in the big yellow. If you offer more than one service, be sure you advertise under all the appropriate headings, like new, used, lease. So you cover every place a good catch might be. Excuse the pun. Broadcast your story in the yellow. Well, if a player is in clean and he hooked or impeded from behind, it prevents him from getting a shot on goal. It's a penalty shot, and I would say, Fred, you're right. Look at this. He's in all by himself. No call by the referee, Andy Van Helleman. He never got a shot away, although the puck trickled into Dryden. Could have very easily called a penalty shot on the play, but the Bruins have the man advantage. Draw to Schmatz. Schmatz lost the puck. Gets it again. Robinson checks him. He gets it to Cashman. Cashman in the corner. Back for Schmatz. Drives and it's deflected high. Rebound. Rattel to Cashman. Into the corner. Rattel with it. Rattel checked by Jarvis. Cashman gets it. Back to Shepard. Shepard checked by Robinson. Robinson trying to break. And Schmatz moving back. Try to clear it out. Kept in by Jarvis. Pass in front. Schmatz just broke it up. Rattel back. Three on one. Rattel over the line. Robinson gets back. What a play he made, but Cashman has it now. Cashman going behind the net. Shepard in front. The pass is broken up. Now kept in by Park, who's on. Cleared away, and the play called for it offside. And the Bruins dangerously close to giving away a breakaway and then coming back with a three and one. Larry Robinson. You understand why he was Nara's trophy winner getting back on that play. Well, when you're the last man back, Bobby Schmatz have the puck. You never throw it away blind. He threw it back along the boards. Jarvis, very quickly realizing what was going on, 
moved in and he almost centered it in front to Robinson who could have tipped it by uh, Cheevers. 10.48 left to play second period. Bruins on a power play. 1.17 left on the penalty to Savari for hooking Schmutz. The draw to Boston. Shepard over to Park for McNabb and he lost it. And LaPointe, the quick clear. Shepard back. LeBear after him. Now to Park. Park with Ganey. Ganey a run at him again and Shepard gets it off to McNabb who overskated it. And Ganey has it. Ganey checked. Knocked down. O'Reilly with it. Over the line to McNabb. Moving in. Shot. Save. Dryden. Puck kept in. Shepard. Shot. Block. Shepard. In for McNabb. Shot. Save. Oh, McNabb had the chance. And Dryden with the biggest save of the game right now. Peter had a second or two. And maybe that's too long to even think about it. Well, it's easy from up here, but Peter McNabb had room from this angle to move out and give him a better angle at uh, Dryden. Dryden held that short side goal post. McNabb actually, from the angle he was at, did not have much room to put it by Dryden. If he'd moved towards the center a little more, he had the time, but of course, we're up here and looking at the play. Peter's down there. He's not too sure just what he's gonna do next. A little bit of hesitation. But you can't blame him for that. The action's been hot and heavy as there's 43 seconds left on the penalty to, to Serge Savard. The draw, and the Canadians clear it out. The line is McNabb, middle and left, O'Reilly right with Park and Schmatz for checking Risebro. And he bothers Park. Now McNabb off to Middleton. Left wing side with O'Reilly, picking up speed, fires it in. Dryden to Robinson, he can't get it. McNabb keeps it in, back for Park. Fed around the boards. Dryden, a big block. Check. O'Reilly with it. Trying to jam it in as he almost caught Dryden out of position. And Dryden with the big, long, lanky left leg reaching out, able to tie it up at the side of the net. Had O'Reilly poked out in front, he had an empty net. Well, Ken Dryden not known for coming out of his net, and the reason is that he's not comfortable out there. And look at this. O'Reilly trying to stuff it in the corner, but with his back to the goal, Dryden, watch this now. This is great action around the Canadian's net, but look at Dryden with that long left leg. He doesn't like to come out. He's not comfortable out there, and he got trapped. I said long left leg, too. It's not any longer than the right, but <laughs> no, it happened right. to be there. <laughs> but he has a couple of long legs, Fred, I'll tell you that, and it got a great reach. <laughs> 14 seconds left on the penalty to Savard. 9.45 left second period. Boston leads 2-0. Their goals. First period by Gary Doak and Rick Middleton. And the Bruins on a power play looking. To keep the pressure on Jarvis against McNabb. McNabb to Rick Smith. Check. Middleton keeps it in. Falls down. Gets it away to O'Reilly. O'Reilly to McNabb. Backhand save. Puck free. Cleared. With it. Doak. Fires. Save. Oh, two stops in a row by Ken Dryden. And the penalty is up. And Boston had an excellent power play. They had the chances. And big Ken Dryden, the applause for the Bruins power play. Ken Dryden, some big stop. Well, here's the pressure right here. Good play by Middleton into O'Reilly. Watch now over there, McNabb, the backhander. And here's another big stop from the point. Dope drove one from the right point, and Dryden had to be very quick. Look at the position that Dryden has in the balance. He's down, but now again he's up as he was set for McNabb's drive. Miller is centering Jonathan on the right, Marcotte on the left, and the Canadians at full strength. They trail 2-0. Lemaire to Savard. Stopped by Rick Smith. Lemaire again. Good shift up. Drives it in all the way around the boards. And the Canadians keep it in. Blocked by Rick Smith on the pass up. And he clears it out by Anglin. No, I've seen Dryden trying to play it. Does. Right to the Boston end, and Cheevers has to get ahead of Lemaire and tie it up. And with the score, Boston 2 and Montreal nothing, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs. Say, those are gorgeous Volkswagen. They're limited editions. Limited? How come? There's something special, something we adore. With seats like velvet and plush carpets on the floor. The trim is stunning, the color's unique. It's really outrageous. The 
Face off to the right of Cheevers, who made that play there to slow this game down, keep the pace down. He'll take the whistles and the face offs no matter where they are. Shepard against Lemaire. Lemaire Lafleur shot line against Shepard. Schmott's right, Marcotte left. That puts him on Lafleur. The draw goes back to Robinson. Screen shot in, blocked. Shepard clears it out. Savard, a quick pass up. Lafleur touched it, and it's offside. And the frequent whistles are okay as far as the Bruins are concerned. A chance to uh, take a face off, get organized, and cover your man. Shepard, trying to work it free, is stopped by Robinson. Savard, the shot. Puck popped in. Cleared out by Marcotte. And the face off is being called inside the Boston Blue Line by Linesman Pavlich, Leon Stickle, the other linesman. I believe that's Don Cherry in a Bruins uniform. A Great young call. Defenseman. I was going to say Penny Lund, but he was a right hand yeah, shot. I <laughs> think that's who it is, but I'll tell you, <laughs> it's hard to tell, boy. But I think that's Don Cherry. There he is. 8.33 left. The draw won by Shepard. Milbury, a soft flick out. Savard winding up again. Shepard on him. Forces a pass that's stopped by Boston. And Park clips it in. Going to call this icing. When we started the playoffs, they started waving off little situations like that. The flip saying, you know, the fellow should have gotten it. Too many whistles. But... The Bruins will take the whistles. Well, I think one of Don Cherry's biggest beef is the lack of consistency in the refereeing. Uh, one series they're calling it this way, one another. Bruins get the draw. Milbury turns the net. Out to Shepard. Shepard trying to clear it up. Blocked. Milbury lost it. Lafleur bats it in. Backward park. Around the boards. And hops over Englund's stick. Shepard in pursuit, down to get it. Centers it, a backhander on Dryden. Dryden drops it for Englum, and this could be icing. At the end of tonight's game, Slits Light Beer, the only light beer with gusto, will present the most valuable player award. Boston Gold's first period, dope from Rattel after 59 seconds, his first series goal. Rick Middleton from Jean Rattel at 5-11. Boston 10 shots, Montreal 7. It's been a, a grinder here in the second period. Both teams had some power play chances. As Bob Miller is in at right wing with Rattel and Cashman. The draw to the Canadians. Jarvis, Cornway right, Lambert left. Lambert hasn't played much. A pass up the boards, Cornway. Winding up in the zone, Rattel after him, Miller after him now, forces a pass, Robinson carries out. Puck played up, grabbed by Doak, hangs on, and the Canadians were offside on the play. Face off outside the Boston line. Driven in, wide of Cheevers, Rick Smith there. Fell down, gets up, flicks it to Cashman slowly. Cashman trying to move it out with Rattel's help, can't. Now it's knocked out. Ool there, broken up by Cashman. Cashman's pass stopped by Robinson. Robinson starting at back, Rattel after him. Slows him down, now Savard to Robinson. Miller in on Robinson. And the pass goes free, this is icy. No, they wave it off, it's all the way to Cheevers. Cashman wheels, getting the puck and trying to clear it out. And it struck Van Hellemann, then a face-off call. And with the score, Boston 2, Montreal nothing. The 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs continue in just a moment. Hi, I'm Bob Miller of the Boston Bruins. When it comes to hockey, I'm a professional. And when it comes to feeding your family the highest quality foods at some of the best prices in town, you can't beat the finest. Their beef is always tender and juicy, and their fruits and vegetables are the freshest in town. 
How do I know all this about finest? Easy. My mom's been a finest shopper as long as I can remember, and she knows the pros. So come to the finest and score with the pros. Mark Hunt is out to cover LaFleur, a deliberate move by Don Cherry on this play with McNabb and O'Reilly. When he spotted LaFleur, he put Mark Hunt out for Jonathan. McNabb to Mark Hunt. Fed in, O'Reilly on Engblom. Dryden handles it, though. Up the boards and out. Brad Park there. Put clear up. McNabb checked by Ganey. O'Reilly to Marcotte, to McNabb, can't move in, O'Reilly does, Spill trying to move in, dropped it back, to Marcotte a shot, a save, and the crowd wants a tripping call on the Canadians, out now Mondu, Mondu whips it around the boards, and they let it go, and Englum a shot, blocked, bounces in the corner, McNabb there, he's down though, the puck bounces for Milbury as Ganey is upended, Milbury rushes, flips it in, can't move in on Englund. Around the boards, Marcotte. Here's Englund hauling down Milbury. The puck to O'Reilly in the corner. O'Reilly out of the corner to Marcotte. Marcotte keeps it in. In for McNabb with O'Reilly headed in. McNabb in the corner can't make a play. Now gets it to Marcotte. A shot kicked out by Dryden. And center ice Milbury with it. McNabb was flattened on that play. And McNabb failed to clear the zone as Milbury backhanded it in as the Bruins had some pressure. With 5.35 left in the second period, Boston 2 and Montreal nothing. Good shift by O'Reilly, Cashman, and McNabb, or Marcotte, rather. Marcotte, O'Reilly, and McNabb as they kept the uh, Canadians in their own end and had a couple of good scoring opportunities, one by Marcotte from about 35 feet off the left wing. The draw to Serge Savard. Up the middle, checked by Doak. Lemaire drives it in, kicked out by Cheevers. A long shot, but plenty of steam. Rick Smith checking Doak in the corner. Knocked around the other side. Rick Smith there, trying to clear it out. And it, into the stands, the faceoff will be to the left of Cheevers. This is a period where faceoffs have become so important. And the Bruins doing very well in that department. Stay with us during our second intermission. Johnny Pearson will talk with Jean Beliveau. Famous Montreal Canadiens. Tom Larson, Bill for the recap. The puck goes over on the board. Schmatz moves it behind the net. Lost it. Ool trying to move it in front. Blocked. Schmatz again. Checked on the play. Ool battling him. Rick Smith trying to clear it out. Along the dasher. It bounces. Savard keeps it in. In the corner. Doak after it. Up the dasher again and out this time. And Jonathan with a possible break. But Dryden comes way out of the net. To clear it around for Robinson. Can't move it out. Second time, moves it up, and it goes to Savard. Savard up the middle. Now to Ool. Ool to Savard. Savard wide in the corner, centers it, and it goes to Jonathan. He's all alone, though. Goes center ice. Coming on Robinson. Goes wide, stops. Oh, he took a hard hit from Robinson. Vettel trying to keep it in, and Jonathan on the ice, able to tie it up and a faceoff in the Montreal zone. Tom Larson will be along with a recap of the first two periods of tonight's game. John Beliveau will be Johnny Pearson's guest. And One Stan of... Jonathan, who has been a disappointment in the playoffs this year, showing a lot of indecision, and his timing is off. Looking at one-on-one, -on -one, he did not skate hard enough through center to try to take that defenseman with him into the corner, maybe, with a centering pass, and uh, they got the face off. Middleton keeps it in now, knocked down. And Park to Cashman, over the line, checked by LaPointe, goes into the corner, jammed up. Tried free, and Middleton after it. Avoids a hit, gets it to Cashman, the shot, like the ride, as Rick Middleton has played a magnificent game, came out of the corner and set up Cashman, and the applause for Middleton, and Cashman shot deflected. Well, watch Middleton take the hit from Gila Point, stay there, go with it, and then flip a perfect pass out to Cashman, who made the turn. He could see what was coming up. Cashman made the turn to get set for the pass, which he knew would probably come. Middleton took the hit from Gila Point, he knew that was coming, too, and he made a beautiful centering pass. Has it again. Middleton in the corner. Looking. Check. And it goes to Ganey. Ganey broke it up. Rattel trying to keep it in. Now Ganey gets it. He's checked and back to cover Middleton behind Park. 
a flip up to the Canadian zone. Engblom coming back with Ganey. And they drive it in. Rolling. Sheevers bats it around for Marcotte. Marcotte broken up by LaPointe. LaPointe out of the corner. Pass in front. Back oh! save on LaFleur. And the Bruins back. Midland. Lead pass. Marcotte may get this. Drives and misses. Cashman right side. Keeps it in. Takes a hit. Marcotte with it for Park. Park fires. Dryden saves. Marcotte to Park again. A shot. Missed the net. A penalty coming up on Montreal. Holding call on Jarvis. As Brad Park had two tremendous shots. And the Bruins have a power play with 3.09 left here in the second period. A holding call on Jarvis. Oh, what action here by the Bruins. Brad Park with one drive. Dryden stayed up, made the stop. Here's the second one. And also, again, the missed the net. But what great hockey we've seen here. From almost two periods of play, Boston out in front, 2 nothing. The, the penalty goes to Jarvis for a holding at 16.51. As Boston applying tremendous pressure. Marcotte, Middleton, and Jean Rattel. And I'll tell you, that line has been great. What a player that Middleton's turned out to be. And Marcotte set up both those plays. There's Lafleur with a bit on Cheevers. And a beautiful right skate save by Cheevers. Very, very quick. Guy Lapointe made a good play along the right boards. He centered it in front. And Guy Lafleur missed a great chance. Draw to O'Reilly to Shepard. Left point. In the McNabb. McNabb in the corner. Moves it in deep to Cashman. Around for O'Reilly. Off wing side. O'Reilly broken up. Shepard gets it though. Rolls it in. McNabb on it. Can't get it. Shepard keeps it in a shot. Tip wide as Cashman was in front. Knocked down on the play. McNabb back to Shepard. Shepard into O'Reilly. Off for Park. Drives. Misses. O'Reilly the rebound in front. Can't get it. Over to Park. Park. Wheels. Turns. Cuts in front. Gets it to McNabb. Shot. Save! And in the corner, Cashman with it. The Bruins storm the Canadians in the power play. Cashman to O'Reilly. O'Reilly to Cashman in front to McNabb. Shot block. Cashman back to Shepard. Shepard in for Cashman. Cashman in the corner to McNabb. Quick shot. Save! Biden. What a stop he made in McNabb. O'Reilly with it. Loses. And the puck is cleared. One minute of solid. Steaming power play. McNabb robbed by Ken Dryden. Two minutes left here in the second period. Shepard to O'Reilly. Broken up. And over the line, it is called for the offside. 40 seconds left. As fine a power play as you want to see, but there's the big man. And he made a tremendous stop out of Peter McNabb standing 10 feet right in front of his doorstep. Here he comes now. Watch Dryden. Beautiful stop with that catching glove. He couldn't contain it, but he managed to regain his composure with that stick. Here's the beautiful play. Watch Cashman set him up right in front. There's the drive, and that's a magnificent play all around. Bruins passing the puck well. Shepard to O'Reilly into McNabb, and a sensational stop by Dryden. Well, one minute of solid action in the Canadian end. 149 left here in the second period. Draw to Park, who stays on with Shepard. Rattel, Jonathan Schmatz, the line. Shepard clears in. Dryden for Englum. Kept in by Park. For Jonathan, moving in, the shot blocked. Shot by Jonathan, blocked again by Dryden as that reached him. And the Canadians clear it. All the way down behind Cheevers. Back for Shepard. 15 seconds left on the penalty. Shepard starts it away. Up to Schmott, stays on side, flipped it, it's blocked, center ice, and Ganey rushes. Penalty is up, Ganey picks up Uhl, turns Jonathan, drops it in front, and great play, Rick Smith on Uhl. The puck is back to Englum, shot, blocked in front. Park trying to clear it out, and Park has it. Ahead now to Rattel, Rattel over the line, in for Jonathan, too deep. Jonathan in the corner, cuts back, drops it for Rick Smith, who kept it in. In the corner for Schmatz. Less than a minute left. Rattel with it. Behind the net. Rolls it off for Jonathan. Jonathan. Checked by LaPointe. And the puck to Jarvis. 
Jarvis off to Englum. Englum over the line, trying to go in on Doak. Ridden off, spun around, into the corner, in to get it, LaFleur. Dropped it right to Jonathan. 20 seconds left. Off for Schmops. A break here with Rattel. Off for Rattel and hopped over his stick as he started to cut in with Jonathan. 15 seconds left. These two lines are tied. The Bruins tie it up. And the fans, well, you hear them. 11 seconds left. Face off to the right of Dryden, who has pre prevented the Bruins from adding to that two-zip league particularly on the power play. Well, they didn't score on the power play, Fred, but that was as good a power play as you want to see. They had the Canadians standing flat-footed in their own end. They were passing it all around them. Hey, here's Cheevers making a big stop in front, and watch this on Ganey. A little bit of toe dancing with the glove and the stick. Miller keeps it in. Doke, too. Now it's blocked. Time will run out in the period as Miller battles a shot. And there was no scoring in the second period as the Bruins preserve a 2-0 lead. The score at the end of the second period, Boston 2 and Montreal nothing. Boston Bruins Stanley Cup hockey continues in just a moment. The computer, startlingly fast, incredibly precise, and now, from Magnavox, comes the first computer TV. Touch Tune Color Television. Touch Tune and lock in computer sharp color, computer fast, even by remote, in a wide range of prices and styles. Star System, Touch Tune Color Television from Magnavox. See all the fine Magnavox stereos and televisions at Jordan Marsh locations. Smaller cars are the toughest on oil. Their hot, high revving engines can break down an oil's viscosity in no time. In fact, in an independent lab test of SAE 10W40s, Quaker State and Pennzoil both showed significant breakdown in viscosity. Castrol didn't break down at all. Any oil can resist breaking down in the can. Castrol doesn't break down in your engine. Castrol, the motor oil engineer for smaller cars. When we were chartered as the Provident Institution for Savings, savings was our only business. But we've added a lot of services since then. So now we could call ourselves the Provident Institution for Savings, Loans, Now Accounts, Retirement Plans, Check Cashing Cards, Term Deposits, Mortgages, Savings Bank, Life Insurance, Direct Deposits, Bill Paying, etc. But if our name told you everything we do, our sign might be a problem. So you could call us the Provident Institution for everything. Did you know in this state, if you'll just wait till seven weeknights, you can call 40 miles, talk five minutes, can't cost you more than a dollar five. From Springfield, you can run over to Worcester for five minutes. You can hop from Worcester up to Fitchburg or swing over to Lowell. Slide down to Boston, and the second five minutes costs even less. Bargain toll rates in Massachusetts, weeknights after seven. A very nice state of affairs. Hey guys, Grandma's got a surprise for you. There's a whole batch of them. How many are there? Bruins have been something else in the uh, first two periods tonight, not at all in awe of the supposedly superior Montreal Hockey Club. The Bruins lead the game by a score of 2-0. Shots on goal in that second period, Boston 15 and Montreal 5. Ken Dryden has been something else. Shots on goal through two periods now, Boston 25 and Montreal 12. And John Pearson's guest here between periods, Montreal's all-time great Jean Beliveau. Well, Jean, uh, you look great. Uh, almost uh, good enough to be down there on the ice. Well, uh, the way that the both teams are skating tonight, I don't think I have any business there. There's a time for everything. I think uh, the first two periods was uh, what I saw. Uh, certainly uh, looks like a, a great game again. Uh, I think the both team uh, started where they left off on Tuesday night, and uh, I'm sure that uh, every fan here and on television are seeing 
a great a great hockey game. Well, John, with all those great years with the Montreal Canadiens, I know your heart is with the Canadiens, but this has been a tremendous hockey game. Well, I know there's uh, quite a bit of holding out there, but that's part of the game. Uh, we uh, we know the Canadian have a little edge on skating, and so uh, every tactic, I suppose, uh, uh, that uh, a team came up, uh, you have to find a way, uh, as long as it's according to the rule, uh, to uh, to try to win those games. And I'm sure that uh, every players and every time they are there, you can see from where I sit there uh, that everybody is going all out. And a lot of body checking. Uh, there's a lot of uh, feeling down there on the ice as well. Well, I'm sure that uh, both team uh, after this game is over. There will be a lot of bodies uh, that are going to be a little tired. But uh, when you reach the finals, uh, you've been working uh, all along. You uh, uh, Sometimes people feel that uh, after so many games, for so many months, uh, might have a little tired. might think you're tired, but uh, when you hit the ice, you forget about it and you go. And uh, I'm sure that we have two hockey teams that are in great physical condition. John, over the past uh, many years, Canadians have always had uh, great hockey teams. They've challenged for the Stanley Cup and won it many, many times over the last 15 years. There's a certain mystique that goes on with the Montreal Canadiens. How do they maintain the player personnel? Uh, what goes on in the Canadian organization that makes them so great? Well, I think it goes back a uh, long ways, many, many years ago, uh, when uh, you used to uh, sponsor directly and built your own farm team. I think Canadian used to spend quite a bit more money than any other organization. Uh, when the expansion came in in 67, 68, we uh, were left with quite a few hockey players. So we were fortunate enough to uh, trade some of those players for draft choice. But now the rules are changing. Uh, there's a draft uh, right after the training camp. And now you are going to be allowed uh, in this fall uh, to protect only 18 players, two goalie, your this year draft choice and two, uh, two year and more. And uh, this is going down all the time. Uh, I think we've been uh, very uh, fortunate too, in a way, uh, in our draft choice. Uh, some people, uh, I know many teams would like to have Larry Robinson, but we draft him 20th. 19 other teams let him go. Uh, Jarvis came from Toronto. Bob Ganey was picked 11 and so on. Uh, but most of, the, of those youngsters went to Halifax. And Al McNeil and his people down there have been doing uh, in the last uh, seven or eight years a fantastic job uh, just teaching the uh, basic, uh, the fundamental of hockey, improving on what we feel might be their weakness. Uh, skating is very important in this organization. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have sent five or six, uh, five or six to our uh, power skating. So. Uh, if you add all that together, that's what makes a champion. Well, we have to pause here for a moment, but we'll be right back after the uh, these uh, intermission. Hey guys, Grandma's got a surprise for you. There's a whole batch of them. How many are there? Why is a sandwich so good to sink your teeth into? Because Sunbeam bread is batter whipped to give it a soft, smooth, even texture with no holes. Batter whipped. That's the Sunbeam difference. A sandwich is better than a sandwich. That's why you can't keep a sandwich to yourself. Introducing the Subaru Brat. Fun on wheels. The Subaru Brat is a new kind of car that shifts from front wheel to four wheel drive at the flick of a lever. And the Brat's back is wide open. So is the fun you can have in its two outdoor seats. The Subaru Brat. Fun on wheels. Come on and taste a real good time at Valley's. Come on and bring the family down to Valley's. It does 
doesn't cost a lot to taste the best we've got. Everything's fresh here. The menu's the best here. Come on and taste a real good time at Valley's. Valley's and Andover Saga's Brinkley and Newton, also in Kittery, Maine. This is TV 38, WSBK-TV, Boston. Our guest here at the end of the second period, the Canadian's great John Beliveau, who is presently vice president of the Canadian Hockey Club and in charge of corporate relations. John, uh, Boston played a so-so game in Montreal in the first game. They played now five very strong periods, plus the overtime period against Canadians. What do you see as the difference uh, in the Bruins' style of play, uh, which has allowed them to play the Canadians so close for these two games? Well, I noticed in the first game that uh, uh, Boston didn't seem to pay any attention to, uh, to Lafleur. Uh, last Tuesday in Montreal, they uh, came back and uh, they had marked up pretty well, like they're doing tonight. On many occasions, we have seen quick change on a part of Bowman, sending Lafleur and Cherry coming with but I think as a whole, the Boston team in the last uh, five period have been checking very well. In a game like tonight, uh, uh, I think in a way they're over-checking Canadian. And that's why the, the, uh, the Canadian going to have to uh, start uh, to uh, four-check uh, one and two. If they don't do it, they're going to be checked. And uh, uh, that's the choice you have when you play on a road. You're going to be che checked or you better uh, try to take the initiative and go and check in their end. Take the aggressive ones away from the Bruins uh, in their own end. Well, that's their, that's their, their style that they've been using, and uh, uh, you've got to cope with that. That's part of the game. John, I want to thank you very much. A pleasure to have you with us. A uh, great guy and a great hockey player over the years for the Canadians. You're a nice guy to come on. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. John Beliveau, Vice President of Corporate Relations of the Montreal Canadiens, has been our guest here at the end of the second period, third game of the Stanley Cup Finals, and now to Tom Larson. Between period guests receive a gift certificate from John and Paul Arasian of Eastern Coat Company of Watertown, who wish the Bruins success in the Stanley Cup playoffs. 2 0 Boston at the end of two periods. We'll be back and check some of the telecasts of baseball and hockey coming up and recap the game to this point, too, right after this. I gave my husband a choice of birthday presents Zebco Rod and Reel, Silver Compass, Kershaw Pocket Knife, Gun Case, and Tote All Field Chair. Got my choice just for test driving a Scout. Your choice of big name sports equipment will be mailed to you at half price when you test drive a 4x4 Scout at participating international harvester dealers. Ask for details. This Scout, it's my present to me. Test drive the Scout 2 at Northeast International Trucks Incorporated, Medford, Mass. Now Eastern Airlines lets you see the people you've been wanting to see with super savings everywhere in the U.S., 30 to 40 percent off. So a couple from New York can be with their son in South Carolina. A young doctor from Chicago can be with his family in Atlanta. And a little girl from Philadelphia can be with her friends in Walt Disney World. Take advantage of Eastern super savings everywhere and get together with the people you love. Come to Meat Street USA at the finest for some of the best meat your money can buy. Our finest value trim assures you that you're paying for good meat and not waste. And every piece of meat is guaranteed for freshness. And when it comes to beef, all our beef is USDA choice. So it's guaranteed, flavorful, and juicy. The date tells you it's fresh, the color tells you it's fresh, and the USDA choice symbol assures you of top quality. So come to Meat Street USA at the finest and see what a difference quality really makes. The finest, first for values. Start with the design of a dependable Toro, a design for mowing the tight spots, an easy starting engine with peak cutting force, our unique housing that lifts grass for an even cut, rugged front wheel drive for easy handling, and a bag back out of the way, a bag that's easy to empty, and you've got the most mower ever engineered by Toro. Haven't you done without a Toro long enough? See the yellow pages for your nearest Toro dealer. Well, the Red Sox are in Detroit for a series starting tomorrow night. Four games against the uh, surprising Detroit Tigers, and we have all four of them coming up here on TV 38. 8 o'clock tomorrow night, and then afternoon games on Saturday and Sunday. 2 o'clock Saturday, and it's a doubleheader on Sunday afternoon starting at 1.30. The Red Sox and the Tigers in a four-game series. And we have Stanley Cup Finals action on Sunday evening. Of course, it'll be the fourth game of this series between the Bruins and Montreal starting at 8 o'clock. 
Two nothing Boston, the score here. All of the scoring so far in the first period. Doak at 59 seconds, Middleton at 5-11. First period shots on goal, 10-7 Boston. No scoring in the second period. The Bruins out shooting Montreal 15-5. Total for the first two periods, Boston 25 shots on goal, Montreal 12. Two nothing Boston, third period action is coming up right after this. Ford Trucks, the best-selling truck line in America. Top Ford Couriers, Top Ford Pickups, Top Ford Vans, Top Four Wheelers, and Top Big Trucks. In 1977, Ford sold more trucks than any other make in U.S. history. So get on the move during that great Ford drive. Get a great buy at your New England Ford dealer now. your style wherever you work whatever you do whatever it is that makes you you at the first national bank of boston we like your style that's why we offer a whole range of banking services to match it visit the first and see for yourself see how our style of banking fits your style of life here at the first we like your style Schlitz Light Beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. What did you just give him? His beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. Oh, yeah? Schlitz Light. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. Have you played your number today? Kevin Busher played his number just before he went away for his honeymoon. Well, I had gone away on a honeymoon, and... Uh... For the weekend, when I come home, my I asked my mother what the number was, and she told me I thought she was pulling my leg. And uh, come to find out she wasn't, and I hit, and it was a pretty good wedding present. What did your new wife say? She didn't believe it. She, uh, she was pretty tickled. Have you played your number today? Well, as you can see, the Bruins are skating around leisurely, waiting for the Montreal Canadiens to uh, appear for the start of the third period, and in the second period, not quite as wide open as the first. But nonetheless, some great goaltending at both ends of the ice, especially by Ken Dryden on the power play that Boston had, and he made a magnificent stop on a shot off the stick of Peter McNabb standing directly in front of the Montreal net. He whistled one to the left of Dryden, who managed to get his glove on it, bounced it up, knocked it into the corner with a stick, Cheevers was just as spectacular in goal for the Bruins. And we're now looking at a 2-0 Boston lead at the start of the third period. This is game three of the final Stanley Cup for 78 and a must-win, Fred, for the Boston Bruins. And game four will be Sunday night here at the Boston Garden at 8 o'clock. Boston sometimes have had a sagging second period. But 13 shots for Boston, five for Montreal doesn't indicate that. It started it's a little bit slow. The Bruins' power play, much maligned this year, has been effective in the playoffs, and none better than in that first minute when they had a great opportunity, but give Dryden credit. Well, I was getting a little worried and nervous because Boston was just dumping the puck out of the center ice, and the Canadians were uh, spending too much time controlling the puck. But all of a sudden, it sort of turned around. Boston got it in the Canadians, and they started to put some pressure on them. That line with uh, Middleton was uh, sensational. O'Reilly and McNabb, they were doing a great job of containing the Canadians in their own end. We're all set now for third period action. Here's Fred Cousin. Shot to Lair, Guy Lefleur, and Steve Schutt. With Savard and Robinson, and for Boston, Greg Shepard, Marcotte, who has mostly been out there against Lafleur, particularly in the second period, Schmott's right wing, with Park and Milbury. Savard with it as we're underway, third period. Lemaire rolls it in, Cheevers for Park. Around the boards, Robinson against Schmatz, and the puck goes out to center ice. Lafleur 
flipping it back in, but Shutt was offside. And the faceoff at center ice. Looking at Guy Lafleur. World's greatest hockey player, says uh, uh, Don Cherry. Seems to have a little cut on the forehead that he did not have after game two. Puck at center ice blocked by Park. Robinson. Pass blocked by Schmatz. Savard taps it in. Milbury on it. Down to Marcotte. Over to Park. Up for Schmatz. Doesn't work. Schmatz breaks up Robinson. To Shepard. Shepard with Schmatz. Gets it over to Marcotte. Marcotte a backhander. And it's wide as he cut in. Schmatz keeps it in. To Shepard. Shot. Saved Biden. A Shepard gun that for the short side. Guy Lafleur flips it. And the faceoff to the right of Dryden as the Bruins, with solid checking, set up a scoring chance or two. Nice play by Don Marcotte. Here it comes, I believe. Marcotte to Shepard. Here's the drive. And look at Dryden. Well positioned, good balance, good concentration. And we're seeing two very, very fine goaltenders in this final series. Cashman left wing, Rick Middle in right wing. Middle in back for Rick Smith. Over to Doke. Doke fires in. Save. Rebound in front. And with it, Cashman. Drills it. Block. Cashman again with everybody down. Cuts in front and fires high as he has another chance. Doke keeps it in. Check. Clears it up. Block. Engblom taps it out. And Rick Smith on it. And the Bruins had a great chance there. And Dryden. Knocked it around the boards. Rattel keeps it in. Centering pass. Stopped by Mondu. In on Dryden, he drops it middle and goes in, centers it. It's blocked. Rattel gets it free to Cashman. Cashman checked. LaPointe gets it out. Pass up, stop. Rick Smith handled it beautifully. Cleared it up to the Montreal line. Now Englund. Up the boards. Dope hits Mondu and knocks him down. Great hit by Dope. Puck cleared out by the Bruins. Mondu back up, clears it in. Robinson is after it. And it's knocked up the boards. Now Robinson keeps it in. Broken up by Doak as Rick Smith hauls Robinson down. LaPointe now with the Bruins changing quickly. Englund. A wild pass stopped by Milbury. Quick clear out. Rattel can't set up Middleton. And McNabb can't hit Lafleur. As Uhl and Marcotte battle. The puck fed in. Around the boards. Uhl trying to keep it in. Lafleur does. Cheevers out of the net. Gets it to Milbury. Up the middle. McNabb breaks. McNabb over the line. Checked by Lupien. Moves for a shot. And it's wide. Mark out a shot blocked. In the corner. O'Reilly spilled. Or knocked off it. Savard keeps it. Spins away. Savard to Uhl. Fed in. Could be icing. A race. Mark back. And they wave off the icing. Lafleur keeps it in. Broken up. Milbury carries it out. Milbury. For McNabb. With Milbury to Milbury, he's in to McNabb. Score! Peter McNabb from Mike Milbury. A beautiful combination. And Peter McNabb makes it 3 0 for Boston. Beat it in as they lead. Around the boards. Conway checked by McNabb. LaPointe checked by O'Reilly for McNabb. In for O'Reilly. Has to go to the boards for it. Dryden trying to clear it out. McNabb trying to keep it in. And it's tapped up. Conway gets it out. Center ice offside to Risebro. Peter McNabb had two shots on net in the first. With the score of Austin 3, Montreal nothing. This is Boston Bruins Stanley Cup hockey. In Gloucester, where salt air and salt water are the rule, the brand of boat wax and chrome polish they use the most is rule. 
And what salt air and seawater can do to a boat, that's what road salt and highway grime can do to a car. That's why there are some brand new rules, rules of the road. Auto products to give your car the brightest chrome and deepest shine our scientists have ever tested. New marine tested rule, all kinds of products for all kinds of boats. Mike Milbury with a tremendous burst of speed broke through the, the Canadian's defense after making the pass to uh, Peter McNabb. He took the return pass and then in on Dryden, he flipped it to the side and McNabb tossed it in. Risebro now winding up for Montreal. Rattel after him. And the pass up goes all the way down to Cheevers. He clears it himself outside the line. Bouchard over to Lapointe. Puck blocked by Cashman. Cashman with Middleton, trying to streak ahead. Middleton can't collect it. Bouchard with it. His pass blocked by Rick Smith. Fed up the boards. LaPointe for the Canadians. The pass center ice. Doak blocks it. Flipped it into the Canadian bench. Peter McNabb had two shots in the first period, four in the second. That's a total of six, which was half the total of shots on net that the Montreal had. He had his chances, but here he makes it good. Nice little drive, and a good thing McNabb was the left-hand shot because if he'd been right-handed, he might have had a problem because his body was behind the net when he put it into that top corner. A big play by Mike Milbury. I can't talk enough about how he burst through the center to set up the pressure on the Canadian. Cheever's handling it again, clears it around the boards. Marcotte pinched in. Shepard over to help out, flips it out of the zone. Robinson there to Lafleur. Fed in on the boards. Cheevers has to block it and play it. Hangs on dangerously. Almost broken up, but gets it over to Park. Park checked out of the play. Marcotte back to help out to Schmatz. Schmatz breaking. And Marcotte had cut offside. Schmatz didn't see him as he was maneuvering at center ice. At live from Boston Garden, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup Finals. Out in the street. It's a Fairmont. No, it's a Celica. It's a Pinto. No, it's a new Oldsmobile Salon. Oldsmobile? Roomier than Fairmont. Cheaper than Celica. Able to get better gas mileage than even a Pinto 6. Oldsmobile? The new Old Salon. Dedicated to comfort, economy, and the American way. See one at your mild-mannered New England Oldsmobile dealer now. Boston goals by Doak and Middleton in the first period. Scoreless second period, McNabb here in the third. His seventh series goal from Milbury at 2.54. Milbury with Lafleur after him. Check. Marcotte gets it to Shepard. Shepard with Schmatz. Schmatz has to chase the pass, gets the shot away. It's off Robinson. He takes a hard hit from Robinson as the puck deflects into the stands in back of Dryden. Well, when Bobby Schmatz gets that puck out in front of him with that curve on his stick, it's going to be high because it's got to take off, and he moved that puck too far in front. He really, when he shoots his best, he's got to keep the puck back of that front foot so that the leverage is down. The puck will come up very quickly once he turns that stick and opens the face. Lemaire shot Lafleur against Shepard Schmatz and Marcotte. Marcotte breaks it up and clears. Robinson starts right back. To Lafleur. Lafleur checked, hauled down by Milbury. Down goes Lafleur. No call by Van Hellemann. And the puck is out to Schmatz from Park. Coming up on Robinson with Marcotte far left. In the Marcotte. Broken up by Savard. But Marcotte gets it again, rolls it in the corner. And Lemaire with it. Ruins a close call and a penalty there a moment ago. Here's a clear out stopped by Milbury to Park. In for Schmatz. Can't move with it. Robinson breaks. A pass into the corner. Marcotte covering Lafleur. Gives him a hit as the pass is knocked out by Schmatz. Marcotte moved right on him and rattled Guy Lafleur. Savard now to Robinson. A tough man to hit. He spins away. Gets it to Ganey. Ganey feeds in. Cheevers covers up. And Mondu had no chance. A whistle by Van Hallemann. 14-20 left. Third period. Boston 3. Montreal nothing. Nobody in the National Hockey League, Fred, uses the body any more effectively, any better than Don Marcotte. He had Lafleur, who was a very quick, elusive skater. He tucked the right shoulder in just to key him into the play, stops him right there, then the leverage with the shoulder, and he boarded him into the he bodied him into the boards. A good, solid check, a clean play, and that's the kind of play that sometimes slows down that, the big skaters. 
McNabb discussing the situation with O'Reilly. McNabb moves O'Reilly. As Chartres is at right wing, Mondu center, and Ganey left wing. And Gloomin Lapointe. The draw, McNabb kicks it to Dope. And the Bruins win the faceoff. O'Reilly falls down, center ice. McNabb checks, goes to Lapointe, now to Englund. To Ganey, broken up by Doak. Back to McNabb, over the line for O'Reilly. O'Reilly bearing in. Didn't get the shot off. And Mondu breaks it out with Lapointe and Ganey. Lapointe, wide, centers it. Sheevers knocks it away. Mondu trying to keep it in, does with Ganey. Ganey hit by Doak. Can't center it as McNabb got back. Now Mondu with it on the other side. Stops. Gets it to LaPointe. The pass in front. Knocked away. Over on the boards. Jonathan there. Ah! Gets it out to McNabb. Up the middle. Trying to break. Over the line. Can't set up the play with Jonathan. And the Canadians clear it out as the Bruins change. Don Cherry using just four defensemen tonight. Bruins lead 3-0. Clark trying to get away from Lafleur up to Middleton. He's checked. Middleton comes out with it, though, to Cashman. Over the line with Bertel. And Middleton moving for a shot. Save, Bryden. And Rick Middleton. Middleton has done some kind of a job getting that puck out of the corners. And with the score, Boston 3, Canadians nothing. Bruins Stanley Cup hockey continues after this message. Take off on Delta at up to 50% off regular round-trip fares. Delta's night coach super saver fares give you up to 50% off day tourist Monday through Thursday. Up to 40% off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with some restrictions. Fly round-trip to Atlanta for as little as $105. Miami or Fort Lauderdale, $129. Tampa, St. Pete, $124 on Delta night coach flights. Seats are limited, so call now. Delta is ready when you are. Well, Rick Middleton is out there, and Guy Lafleur for the Canadians to draw to Park. A rolling puck, a shot, a save, Dryden. In the corner, Middleton battling for it. To Rattel, they checked. Puck cleared away to the Boston line. Park back for it. To Marcotte, who's out now covering Lafleur. Savard breaks it up. To Lafleur, he's stopped by Middleton. Robinson trying to move it in. Lafleur knocked down on the play. Robinson gallops over the line, but not the puck. And Rattel right back to Middleton. Middleton fires in a save by Dryden on the long shot. Savard trying to come out. Now for Lupien. And Robinson. He's carried the puck a lot tonight. Robinson trying to come out. Away to Lupien. Gilles Lupien. A flip in wide of Cheevers. Back first, Milbury. Checked there by Uhl. Puck jammed up. Face-off called in the Boston end. 12-17. Left in the third period. Boston leads. 3-0. Goals by Doak and Middleton. Here's the drive by Park. Watch the right skate here of Dryden, who moved a little slow on that. I think it hit the goalpost. It got by him on the drive. Here's the play again. Hit the goalpost on the outside edge. Watch the play right here. What wicked slap shot by Park. Caught Dryden napping for probably the first time tonight. He did not move quick enough on it. It slipped by his right skate, but fortunately for Dryden and unfortunately for the Bruins, it hit the goalpost. Well, we've got Lafleur at center. Robinson is up at left wing with Uhl at right wing. And Lafleur has played very little center in his career. But he's there now with Lapointe and Englum and Robinson trying to move it in front. It's knocked away. Rick Smith there. Can't clear Englum though. Hit. Puck worked out. Now back. Stopped by Doak. Quick clear out. Robinson just lined up apparently at left. No, he's at left wing. Here he is with it. He played a lot of hockey. Trying to go in. Barrels in. Over the line. Checked by Rick Smith. And back to get it. Ooh, a centering pass. Lafleur save. Cheevers. Puck. Gets it over the line. Greg Shepard, the big play. The pass to Schmatz. The shot missed the net. As Schmatz came right back. Greg Shepard knocked it away. It was right at the crease. Out comes Engblom now. Engblom carries over the line. Clears it in. Cheever's out again. Moves it around. Cashman there. And Milbury to Shepard. To Schmatz. 
Schmatz over the line. Blocked. Gets it to Shepard. Shepard in the corner. Wrapped up by Lupian. Shepard backs off. Fights for it. Jams it up. Gets the whistle. And gets the face off. And the Canadians came as close as could be. Right at the crease. The puck was no more than an inch or two away when Shepard knocked it out. Well, the Canadians hit the goalpost twice in the first period, but they haven't come as close as this. Watch the stick of Shepard right there. He reaches across as a Canadian. Tried to snap that one into the open net. I don't know who it was, but watch Shepard. Gila Point is stick. Now watch Shepard coming from nowhere. He just managed to dive at that puck as Fred related. Shepard's stick moved across and just got the edge on Gila Point's stick. Here it is again. Cheevers out of his net trying to block it. Watch the stick of Shepard. Gila Point starting to reach, and there's Shepard's stick throwing it into the corner. A dangerous play and close for the Canadians. Pass to Plex Park. Shot in. Save Dryden. As the steam was taken out of the shot, and Lupian winds up for Montreal. Out for Lambert, they played very little, and Park breaks up Lambert. O'Reilly over to jam it up, and the play was offside. 10.47 left in the third period. Boston on goals by Doak and Middleton in the first period. McNabb in the third. A 3-0 Bruins lead. McNabb, Jonathan O'Reilly the line with Park and Milbury. Risebrook, Cornway, Lambert with Savard and Lupian. Jonathan harasses Savard. He spins away with the puck, but loses on the pass to Park. At center ice, Cornway bats it in. Cheevers blocking it for Park. Quick clear out of the zone by Brad Park. Lupian trying to move. Tapped in for Lambert, broken up by Milbury. Milbury around the dasher and out of the zone. Jonathan stopped by Savard to Cornway. Broken up by McNabb. Bet in. Jonathan and Lupian to the corner. Good hit by Jonathan. McNabb gets it. O'Reilly tipped and it goes wide as McNabb set him up in front. Now comes Risebro. Oh, McNabb hustles back. Risebro in deep. Pass blocked. Goes to the corner. Cornway hit and O'Reilly gets it. To McNabb. And he is smashed to the ice by Risebro. McNabb was. Lupian back to get it. Takes a hit from O'Reilly. And with it, Rick Smith. Over the line to McNabb, bearing in, shot, save Dryden on McNabb, who's had a hat full on Dryden tonight. 9.40 left, as O'Reilly and Lupian may go at it. They've had earlier fights. And now they're separated with the score, Boston 3 and Montreal nothing. You're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup playoff. You can take away my hook shot. And the past behind my back. You can take away all my deceptive moves. And my Ooh. slam dunk attack. Right. You can take away my rebound. Yeah. My fast and fancy play. Hey, hey, hey. But please don't take my gusto away. If you don't have shakes, you don't have gusto. No, you don't have me. Oh, say, man, you double dribble my gusto. Hockey at its exciting best as we look at the two coaches. Scotty Bowman on the left, Don Cherry on the right. As we have had some tremendous action, Fred. 9.40 left to play, third period, 3-0 Boston. Marcotte and LaFleur are out there matching again. Rattel on the faceoff, knocked down. Moves it to the corner, though. The point around the boards. Doke moves in, blocks it, keeps it in, fires! And it's blocked by Dryden and cleared away by LaFleur, but Schmatz intercepts and flips it right back in wide of Dryden. 9.25 left, third period. Lafleur, the Boston line, Rattel, Marcotte, left wing, Schmatz, right wing. LaPointe breaks it out to Lemaire. Lemaire over the line. The shot blocked by Schmatz. Deflects into the first balcony, and the faceoff called inside the Boston line. Guy Lafleur is now playing on the right wing side, and I think one of the reasons that Scotty moved him to center for a shift or two to get, try to get him away from Marcotte, number one, but also to give uh, Guy Lafleur maybe a little more ice time. He feels that although Lafleur has played a lot, that he can play a lot, and sometimes he's the spark that can make Canadians go. He's now playing at right wing. Marcotte's covering him on the left side. Puck goes outside the line. Robinson with it. Pass up, stopped by Park. Shifting, beautiful stick handling. Gets it off now to Marcotte. Marcotte over the line. Drives it in on Dryden for a save. Robinson trying to move it out. Schmatz checks, and Shepard 
Shepard flips it up. And LaPointe going to drive it out. Shot gets it. Shot breaking. Checked by Shepard. He's hit by Park. Over in the corner, Milbury. Around the boards. And just out. LaPointe with it. To Robinson. Can do so many things. Robinson took his time. Then the play was offside. A mile. Shot was way offside as they move it in. Around the boards and the Canadians press. LaPleur keeps it in. The pass breaks away. Marcotte trying to get it out. Shepard lead pass too far ahead of Schmatz who would have had a breakaway. LaPleur checks him and Robinson comes back. A pass bounces to Milbury. Quick clear out to Marcotte. And fed right back in the Canadian end. Eight minutes left, third period, 3-0 Boston. Ganey winds up. Up the left side, hit by Dope. Moves to the corner, hit by Middleton. Sheevers to Cashman. Cashman turns the net. Carries it out. He is flying. Gets by Jarvis. Over the line. Swept it in deep. What a rush by Cashman. And back for Englum now. The Bruins matching the Canadians stride by stride. Middleton checks Englum. And he has to wind up again. And a long pass is missed by Ganey. Back for Dope for checking Jarvis. Dope around the dasher. The Bruins out with it. Jonathan breaks two on one with McNabb and the pass is too far ahead of McNabb. He gets it in the corner though, centers it, block. Centers it again, block. Battles for it behind the net. Now in the corner, O'Reilly over there with Ganey. They battle, heavy hitting there. Down they both go. Jonathan trying to jam it up. It's knocked out. Rick Smith with it. Flips it back in. Seven minutes left, third period, three nothing Boston. Savard trying to come out, hit by Jonathan. And the puck over on the boards to Ganey. O'Reilly after him. O'Reilly checks him. Ganey snaps it in. Cheevers passes to Jonathan. Up for McNabb. Doesn't work. Park intercepts. Breaks with McNabb. Goes for the shot. Save Dryden. Oh, he made it look easy. It was a steamer. And the puck fed out. Goes to Risebro. Now to Cornway. And that play is offside. And the fans who started with a standing ovation for the Bruins. What a round of applause with the score Boston 3, Montreal nothing. The 1978 Stanley Cup playoffs continue in just a moment. It's sleek, it's long, it's small, it's strong. Hey, that's my Dodge, that's my Dodge. Does elegance have its price? Of course it does. But that price is a lot less than you'd imagine when the car is a Dodge diplomat. One more luxurious reason people are saying... Say that's my Dodge, say that's my Dodge, say that's my Dodge. Say See your local New England Dodge dealer today. Well, the Montreal Canadiens, who are the masters at freewheeling, are at this moment being freewheeled by the Boston Bruins. Cashman, a shot out the face off, and Dryden makes the save. As that was headed for the short side. Cashman at left wing. Middleton at right wing. The puck up to Risebro. Can't handle it. Checked by Milbury. Rattel gets it. A shift over the line to Cashman. In for Rattel. He can't handle it. Now he does in the corner. But back to get it. LaPointe. LaPointe leads the rush. Looking for an opening. Middleton is playing deep. Goes back. Gets it. Flips it around the dasher. And Cashman works it out carefully. No icing, they say. Well, it didn't reach that goal line anyway. Robinson, LaPointe, up the middle. A pass bounces in, but behind the defense, Cashman there as the Bruins forwards check back vigorously. Cashman checked on the boards, on the puck park, can't move it out. And now it bounces to center ice. Risebro to Lambert, fed back in. And back for it, Brad Park. 5.29 left, third period. Up to Marcotte. Cleared to the Canadian line. And now taking it is Rejan Ouh. Marcotte watching Lafleur. That Ouh whips it away, gets it over the line, and Lafleur was in over the line. He was standing there, but he didn't realize both feet were over the blue line, and the play is offside. 5-14 left to play in the third period. Boston out in front, 3-0. They scored two goals in the first period. Doak at 59 seconds, Middleton at 5-11. The next goal came at 2.54 of this, the third period, by Peter McNabb from Milbury. 
Shepard gets the draw, and Rick Smith fires it in. Loopy in there. Shepard checking. It goes to center ice, and Gary Doak, who scored the first goal, flips it up. Ooh, back to get it. Pass up. Stopped by Rick Smith. And not cleared out. Batted by the Canadians. Into the seats, though, on the faceoff called outside the Boston blue line. 4.57 left. Well, this game is sent to major U.S. cities. Dan Kelly is doing that play-by-play, -play, and he's also doing it for CBC. I did not mean to infer that we are telecasting to the rest of the country, but the picture and his voice is going. And a great, great hockey game as this is carried in New York and other cities. Canadians miss on a pass for Lafleur, and Marcotte clears it out. Schmatz intercepts on Savard over the line, moving, trying to cut in front. Knocked down, can't center it. The Canadians clear, could be icing. It is. Well, oh, Fred, uh, we're not, uh, our audio is not going across Canada, but I'll tell you, the expert cameramen from TV 38 are supplying the pictures. And I'm going to tell you something, we've had some great shots tonight. Faceoff is to the left of Dryden, 435 left third period. Goals by Doak, by Rick Middleton. In the first period, and Peter McNabb in the third. The Bruins outshot Montreal over two periods, 23 to 12. Peter McNabb has had at least a dozen shots on net. Scored a key goal. Gets it to O'Reilly. O'Reilly a shot, Dryden the save. Around the boards, shot draw, trying to move it out. Millbury keeps it in. Behind the net, O'Reilly knocked it down. McNabb trying to stuff it in. They score, and they no goal. Wait a minute. Let's see what Van Hellemann has eaten. I believe McNabb gloved it. Well, it is a goal. I don't know what he's shaking his head no for. Well, I don't know. I thought that I thought he should have called it no goal, Fred. O'Reilly batted the puck in front. McNabb picked it up. Now here's the play coming up. Let's see what happens. It looked to me like O'Reilly batted it to him. McNabb stick. Now watch O'Reilly bat the puck in the center. McNabb stick. That should be a whistle. Should be no goal, but he's allowing it. As O'Reilly will get the goal, it's 4-0 Boston. The Canadians are not discussing it, but from the replay, as O'Reilly tucks it home, and McNabb will get an assist on the play. It comes at 15 39. Milbury and McNabb got the assist. It's 4-0, and don't want to take anything away from the Bruins, but. Van Hellemann was shaking his head negatively on the play instead of affirmatively. Uh, the Bruins with the goal. And a 4-0 lead with less than four minutes left. O'Reilly offside as it's cleared in. Live from Boston Garden, you're watching the 1978 Stanley Cup Finals. Did you know in this state, if you'll just wait till seven weeknights, you can call 40 miles, talk five minutes, can't cost you more than a dollar five. From Springfield, you can run over to Worcester for five minutes. You can hop from Worcester up to Fitchburg or swing over to Lowell. Slide down to Boston, and the second five minutes costs even less. Bargain toll rates in Massachusetts, weeknights after seven. A very nice state of affairs. Well, not to take anything away from the uh, Boston Bruins, O'Reilly batted the puck with his glove, I believe, in front. Now, if a Bruin touches it from that point, there should be a whistle right then and there. The faceoff should be outside. McNabb's stick reached the puck before the Canadian defenseman. Now, it looked like O'Reilly batted it with his glove. We'll have to wait for the uh, after the game to find out uh, exactly what O'Reilly's version of it was. Now. If he intentionally batted it in front, which it looked like he did to me, it should be no goal, but the funny part about it, Fred Andy Van Hillemann shook his head no. But he was <laughs> indicating, I guess, to the Canadians, he should have done the reverse. He should have indicated, yes, that it was a good goal, but he did not. But it's now 4-0 Boston. The goal comes at 15-39, Milbury and McNabb assisting. So the only question now is the shutout, and that's what the Bruins want for Jerry Cheevers in this one, as... The pass at center ice is taken by O'Reilly. A lot of players have lost a lot of weight in this one. And McNabb snaps it in now as McNabb, Jonathan O'Reilly line with 3.25 left, a 4-0 lead. That goal is O'Reilly from Milbury and McNabb at 
Puck cleared by the Canadians. It will be icing again. As the Bruins have carried the play in the third period. With 3.13 left, the faceoff to the left of Ken Dryden. Terry O'Reilly from McNabb and Milbury. And there is O'Reilly, his fifth series goal overall. As the Bruins have checked Montreal as solidly as the Canadians, I'm sure, will say they've ever been checked this year. Guy Lafleur had two shots going into the third period. I don't think he has any in the third. Marcotte is watching him as Robinson carries. Pass broken up by Dope. Intended for Lafleur. Cleared quickly by Shepard. And with it shut. Shut drives it in. Weird bounce. Lafleur after it. Checked by Schmatz. Lafleur moving over to left wing, apparently. Robinson kicks it in. Broken up. Shepard back. He's got Savard to beat. Robinson coming on him, and he fires one wide of Ken Dryden. 4 0 the Bruins lead. Big goals in the third period by Peter McNabb, who's had somewhere around a dozen shots on Montreal. Shut. Center ice. Check. Broken up by Milbury. A dope, rather. And the puck now batted at center ice. As the fans have enjoyed this one, stay with us following the game. Bruins hockey continues with Tom Larson with highlights of tonight's game. First period, Dope from Rattel, then Middleton from Rattel, a 2-0 lead. Bruins outshot Montreal 13-5 in the second period. They'll score a second period. Then McNabb from Milbury at 2-54. And O'Reilly from Milbury and McNabb at 15-39. Hasbro against Rattel. 2.25. The crowd yelling defense. As Risebro flicked it in. Could be icy. No, they say. Cashman back. Trying to come out. He's checked by Chartra. Rattel battles. Down goes Englund. On the boards. A battle. The play is tied up. Talked to Harry Sinden after the game the other night, and he was confident the Bruins could beat the Montreal Canadiens off. The way they played in overtime, their style. And he said that after game two, the Bruins down two games. Risebro trying to move, broken up by Milbury. Milbury on the attack with Rattel and Middleton. Off to Middleton. A pass in front, blocked. Rattel goes over to the corner, battles for it. Lupian trying to move it out. Park takes a hit, keeps it in to Rattel. Rattel trying to get away from England. And back for Ganey. Ganey winding up, 148 left. A shot in on Cheever, took a weird hop. And down he went on a deflected shot. Took a weird deflection, rather. And the Bruins get it and work it out. Cashman. Cheevers is okay, he just seemed stunned by the redirection of that shot by Ganey. 130 left. Puck to the Boston zone with it, Rick Smith. Up to Cashman. Cashman, broken up. Lambert loses to McNabb, and Doak has it. 114 left. The fans cheering. Rick Smith clears it in. Listen to the applause with a minute five left. Standing ovation. O'Reilly back ahead of Mondu with Dope. Dope clears it out. Will be icing. Jonathan trying to prevent it against Lupian. Lupian got there first. 48 seconds left. And still, the fans cheer here. Well, Fred, I don't remember a standing ovation for the Boston Bruins with a minute left to play in this hockey game. Faceoff is to the right of Cheevers. From Montreal, they've got Mondu, Lambert, and Cornoyer with Bouchard and Robinson. Cheevers talking to Brad Park, and there you see the, the fans. And what a great game for hockey. I don't care who you root for. I'll tell you, Pat, this has been a sensational hockey game from start to finish. Draw one by Shepard for Park. Marcotte can't clear it out. Park knocks it away from Mondu. They go to the boards. Back for it, Bouchard. He's checked. 
Shepard there. Park clears it. No icing. 30 seconds left. Marcotte down on Robinson. Checking him all the way. Robinson look out for Shepard. Ooh, he had to. And Marcotte with it. Moving in. Offside, they say. As he would have sent Shepard in alone on the play. 24 seconds left. To see little Greg Shepard ready to line up Robinson was a sight. Robinson had to contend with Marcotte. Well, I think Shepard realized that he was having a problem with Marcotte, so he had a slight advantage, but that's like a steamroller. Trying to stop on him while it's in motion. That Robinson's a big guy. As we have 24 seconds left on the clock, third period, Boston out in front, 4 nothing. Goals by Doak, Middleton, McNabb, and O'Reilly. And the Doak goal came after 59 seconds of play. Don Cherry has gone with the four defensemen tonight. And the fans throwing something on the ice. Paper cups, which only delays things. 24 seconds left in the game. Boston leads 4-0. Rick Smith clears it in. 20 seconds left. The Canadians wheel it out. Rick Smith blocked it, though. For Schmatz, he's onside. And back in the Montreal in on drive. Nine seconds left. You see the time there. Ingram clears it out. Landu, stop. And that's it. The Bruins surround Jerry Cheevers, who pitched a shutout against the Montreal Canadiens here at Boston Garden. Last time the Canadians were shut out was May 13th, 1971 by Chicago, 2-0. A superb performance by the Boston Bruins as they beat Montreal 4-0. And the fans have given more standing ovations to the Bruins tonight than they received in a combination of seasons as they win it in every department for nothing once again the final score of tonight's game boston for montreal nothing boston burns stanley cup hockey continues in just a moment aaron aaron's more than a name it's a promise aaron's in winter aaron's Aaron's throws snow. In spring, Aaron's. Aaron's prepares the rose. Plants. In summer, Aaron's. Aaron's mows. Grass. In fall, Aaron's. Aaron's vacuums. Leaves. Aaron's. Promise. A cut above the rest. Makes a classy dog to make New England's classiest dog track. The big difference between running and racing. Put a little spring in your life at Rainham Park, New England's top dog racetrack. Start planning a whole summer of fun with New England Magazine's Summer Guide. Coming this Sunday only in the Boston Globe. Don't miss it. The Red Sox take out the Detroit Tigers from Detroit tomorrow night starting at 8. Join Dick Stockton and Ken Harrelson for all the action here on TV 38. The Slitz Most Valuable Player Award tonight goes to Brad Park. And remember when watching Boston Bruins hockey, keep plenty of good cold Schlitz light handy. It took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. And the shots on goal in that third period. Montreal had just four. Boston had 13. The totals, Boston 36 and Montreal 16. John? Well, Fred, we've seen two extremely good, well-played hockey games in a row now in the Stanley Cup Finals, and you couldn't ask for better action than what the Bruins exhibited here tonight. This was a very impressive team win in all aspects of the game, but I think the most impressive one from my point of view is that they actually beat the Canadians at their own game. They were freewheeling at the end. They kept the pressure on. This will do them a tremendous amount of good. It'll start the Canadians thinking they're going to have to try harder. We should see another exhibition Sunday night of what we saw here tonight. Uh, forget the score, because this is hockey as hockey should be played. I pricked Brad Part. I'd like to have picked two stars in this hockey game. I thought Rick Middleton 
could have been the first star of this hockey game very, very easily. He was a tremendous player, but I gave it to Park. He didn't figure in the scoring, but he handled the puck beautifully. He was what we call a stem winder for the Bruins. He controlled the play. He slowed it down. He had, he had control of it almost the whole night long, and he played a lot of ice time. But you're going to have to put this one in the books as a team effort. And uh, say for Dryden, it could have been uh, something like seven or eight to nothing. Well, like in the first game, the Bruins lost it four to one. If it had not been for Jerry Cheevers, it could have been about nine to one. I think the same thing was true here. A great shutout for Cheevers. He deserved it, but the Bruins gave him a tremendous amount of protection tonight. The shots on goal indicate that.